That's right, you read it correctly. I'm giving away my course for free right here, right now. Why? Well, because a lot of people in this space sell courses. And some courses, I'm not gonna say any names, are better than others. And I, I genuinely think that mine has a lot of value. But then I was thinking, I was like, you know what? I don't buy courses myself. I read books, I read a book a week. So why am I gonna try to sell a course when I probably wouldn't take it myself? Then I was thinking, okay, if I make a, a course all about how to make a lot of money on YouTube with a small channel, and of course even more money with a big channel, but basically how to monetize and make money immediately, um, I figured a lot of people gained some value from that. But I was like, what if I made it a price of a book? It's like 15 bucks. And I was like, well, I buy books used because I'm a cheap bastard for like $3 on eBay a piece. And I was like, okay, well I could make it $3. Then I was like, you know what would be really cool? $1. You know what would be cooler? Free. So I'm giving away my course completely for free. All I ask in return is that you like the video, comment down below what your favorite section is, and uh, maybe share it or subscribe, I don't know, anything that's free. Before we get into the course, we have a sponsor for today's video, and they're gonna pay you to sign up instead of the other way around. That's right, Weeble is my favorite online stock brokerage I've been using for almost four years, and they're gonna pay you in the form of a sign-up bonus, six free stocks or 12 fractional shares up to some crazy value. But realistically, it's probably gonna be three to $20 per share, but times six is a lot of money, plus $5 worth of free crypto when you sign up. All you gotta do is click the link in my description, download Weeble, it's free, no commissions on tradings, absolutely no subscriptions. I haven't paid them a dime in the three years I've Excuse me. In the three years I've been using them. And then after you've downloaded it, create an account, deposit as little as just one cent to unlock all that free money. And then you can either sell the stocks and cash it out and put it right in your bank account or buy the dip because the stocks are at a discount right now. This video is about how to make you the most money as possible the quickest on YouTube. And the sponsor is about how to put some immediate money in your pocket for free, no strings attached. With that being said, let's get into the course. Welcome to the Fast Pass YouTube class. It's this is the ultimate, I believe, the ultimate YouTube course of YouTube. Co this is like the filet mignon of YouTube courses. Now, I have personally taken other courses, watched a bajillion videos of other YouTubers talking about how to grow on YouTube, little algorithm strategies, and the whole nine yards. I've been doing research on this topic for about six to seven years. And of course, I've reached some success myself, some failures myself, and I've compiled not only information from other people's courses that I maybe don't agree with, things that I've learned firsthand, and just all of the research I have done. I truly believe this is the best YouTube class out there, hands down, and I'm super excited for you to join this because I think YouTube is the best business because it not only can be a passive income monster, it's for everybody, whether you work a nine to five, have two kids, and uh, you can only do this a little bit every night, or you have full time, you're in, you're in a high school, you have nothing else better to do. Uh, w whatever your situation is, I truly believe that after this class, you will be a YouTube pro because let me tell you, when I first started YouTube, I didn't know what I didn't know. And what I mean by that is I didn't know that I needed to understand these simple concepts. I thought, Hey, you pick up a camera, you vlog your day and you upload it on YouTube. And then in a couple weeks from then you're going to gain some traction and blow up. Well, the reality is that is the absolute wrong way to approach it. There are an incredible amount of moving parts when it comes to YouTube from the title to the description, to the tags, to the thumbnail, to the actual video editing, from the equipment you use to film, to the software you use to edit. There is just a million moving parts and I've made a million mistakes and I've learned from them. And this class comes with a full document and the purpose of this is for you to either click and follow along at the same time so you can just kind of see like the bullet points everything we're going about it's categorized it's, it's really awesome i spent two weeks just on this document getting it perfect for you guys so you can either follow along or once you've completed the course you can go back and refer to it without having to watch the videos you can just go back to the document find your little section, click on it, and then uh, there you go. You're good. You've got the information. So this next video series, the Fast Pass YouTube class, is going to be based around this core document here. But after you take this class, you're going to have all of the tools that you're going to need to tackle your YouTube journey head on. And I highly, highly recommend completing this course a minimum of two 
times. And the reason behind that is, you know, sometimes when you watch a movie, it's like, okay, that was a good movie. Then you go back and watch it again. You pick up on more details. And there's going to be an incredible amount of information. So, I mean, even if you're watching an entertaining movie and you miss details, you are really going to miss details. So that's why I said minimum of two to three times or minimum of two times. I really recommend three times because you are going to hands down miss information. But Watch it a couple times and then refer back to the document and, you know, you can just breeze through the document and read it in just like, you know, 30 minutes and really understand all the information and just refer back to it. Or you can watch these videos or even better do both. So I've got an, uh, the intro here and this is just going to be uh, what you can expect. And this is just straight out of the document. Upon completion of this epic, awesome, cancer curing YouTube course, you will be able to complete the following items. You will be able to select high earning viral niches based on proven results and statistics to maximize your revenue, not just general vlog channels, specific types of channels and how to structure them. You'll be able to make intelligent equipment and software purchases based on value and practicality for your specific type of channel. Each channel is different and needs a unique type of setup. And I've provided all sorts of links in this document for you guys to go and find what's best for you. And it's not the cheapest equipment. It's most certainly not the most expensive. It is the best bang for your buck. So it's not like bottom dollar stuff, but it's stuff that is going to be the cheapest for the best quality and last the longest amount of time. Things that I personally use and highly recommend. Let's see what else you will learn how to film. You will learn how to edit and upload content the right way, as well as designing your channel art, profile pictures, your uh, about tab, your front page, your branding watermarks and your upload defaults. So basically just the basic channel setup, basic how to use your camera, basic how to make a video and structure it and basic how to edit it, stuff like that. So it's kind of like a little bit of a video editing and film course too. You, uh, let's see, along with those, you will learn how to make money off of YouTube outside of utilizing AdSense. So you're going to be doing affiliate marketing. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Creating merchandise. I've got a great program to create merchandise with $0. So it's just free money right when you first start. Uh, and brand deals, of course, those are extremely lucrative. You will understand the viral video formula. You can access or you can use across any niche. So I have a formula for you guys called the viral video formula. You can literally refer to it and see what that formula is to make your videos go viral. Furthermore, understanding how to keep your audience engaged to boost audience retention and becoming a professional in SEO to get your video to the very top of the search engine. So your amazing videos will rank higher in the algorithm. Finally, just as important, learning what mistakes to avoid so you don't waste your time and effort spinning your wheels in the mud. Now, let me tell you, the mistakes tab is literally just as important as everything else, if not maybe the most important. You do not want to miss that. That'll be at the very end. Thanks, thanks to avoid. It's, it's extraordinarily valuable. Okay, so here we are going to take a look at two channels that I have. One will be the wrong approach. It's what most people, 99% of YouTubers do and try to do. And what the, the problem is, is this approach is, you know, like the David Dobrik style, the vlog style. This is, you know, the Logan Paul, the Jake Paul. This is what everybody thinks YouTube should be, is what they want to do. And uh, that is actually the wrong approach. I'm gonna, we're gonna go in here in a second and show you why. And then we're going to have another channel here that is uh, the legal channel that me and my dad have that we got to make a uh, $1,000 in its first month being monetized, $2,000 in its second month being monetized. And uh, we're, we're only on month two right now. So we're going to keep going. But uh, this is how we got this channel to be successful. The things that went right, the things that went wrong. And uh, so I'm just going to kind of compare the wrong approach versus the correct approach. And uh, some people might think that the, the one that worked is the worst idea, fascinatingly. So we're going to go ahead in here and uh, here's the document right here. So here is my vlog channel. And uh, this is considered the wrong approach because it has a low CPM niche, not evergreen content. And uh, those two terms we're going to talk about in great detail here later. And um, we've got a low barrier of entry. So anybody can do it. Therefore, lots of competition and too much focus on passion, not the income. So let's take a look at this. Oh, I actually already opened this up. So as you can see right here, I have uh, 41,000 subscribers, about 41 and a half thousand. And um, 
So here is kind of how many views I get, 5K, 2.7K. This is an evergreen type of video just because I've been kind of converting to that a little bit. That is a podcast just simply re-upload from my old podcast that I don't even have anymore. So that didn't do very good. Uh, this is evergreen as well, this top five beginner's trick. This video did horrible. I had a Skillshare sponsorship, feel terrible. But um, then we've got some, you know, the podcast, we've got some gameplays, we've got some challenges, some edit reactions, and yeah, so kind of show you a little bit further, and uh, then we're going to dive into my analytics. So surprisingly, this is really the most basic type of YouTube content, but really this thing honestly is a little, this channel is a little bit better, and that's the reason I actually did get it off the ground to 41,000 subscribers. It is better than a, a lot of people try because it does have a niche. The mistake a lot of people make that we'll talk about in the mistakes section is a lot of people just try to uh, just film their daily lives. You know, they're, they'll film a uh, maybe a uh, boyfriend, girlfriend challenge one day and then a cooking challenge the other day. And that just screws with the algorithm. So we're going to dive into my channel analytics here. And now uh, both of these channels, it's, we've just had a very down week for both channels. But, you know, YouTube is... Up, it's peaks and valleys with an overall uh, upwards trend, but not necessarily the case with this channel. So I started this channel, what, probably six years ago. So it took me six years to get 41,000 subscribers. And six years later, I'm only making $321 a month. Now, I do do pretty good in brand deals, maybe 1,000 a month and maybe another 500 in merch. Uh, usually it's about a thousand a month in merch, but I have not been uploading that much because I've been working on the Grayson Roberts show and keep growing my dad's channel. So here is that. And as you can see, in the past 48 hours, we've got 862. That's the most recent upload. So this is what I mean by evergreen content. How to bunny hop. Learn in minutes. That video was posted four years ago, and it's still getting over 100 views a day. How to buy a bike with $0. That was made six months ago, still getting over 100 views a day. So let's go into some more of the analytics. Let's see, let's see, let's see analytics here. So we're just going to kind of go in and I'm going to show you. So here we go. Yeah. I mean, we are way down because to be honest, I have been kind of neglecting this channel a little bit, growing the Grayson Roberts show, but, um, 4,500 views in the last 48 hours, which, uh, that's, you know, pretty average for my channel when I don't upload. That's pretty normal. Not too much evergreen content. So let's go to views in the past lifetime. So as you can see, nothing happened from 2014 to basically 2018. Nothing happened four years of nothing. And we, and you definitely don't want that. Well, uh, my battery just died, but I'm going to, I'm going to keep showing you this demonstration here. So my, it took four years to get here. Then it kind of took off then died down a little bit, then kind of took off then died it down. It, it's going to take a couple spikes for you to actually get somewhere and then Finally, in 2019, I started going up, you know, peaks and valleys with an overall upwards trend. And then lately, you know, the past year, it's kind of been coming back down and my lifetime revenue is only 10 grand. What is that about? You know, $10,700. That's lifetime I've made in six years on this channel with 41,000 subscribers. And you can see, same with that, same with subscribers, peaks and valleys and, and this channel. And its lifetime has gotten 4.9, almost 5 million views and almost made or only made about $11,000, which is uh, not that much. And as you can see in the past year, out of that $11,000, half of that, over half of that was just last year. So, I mean, six years later and you're making six grand a year in AdSense. And what I'm going to show you today is how to make like absolutely 10 times that number just absolutely shoot it up and i'm going to show you the re uh, the the cpm right here so the cpm is about seven dollars right and i'm going to show you on the other channel it's going to be about twenty dollars past twenty dollars so it's going to be uh what is that almost four times as high and then on this uh the grace and roberts show it's almost i think it's like 30 or 40 it's ridiculous it's so high so not only am i going to show you how to increase your cpm and not make this mistake but um uh, like keep in mind this channel mostly makes its money off of brand deals and merchandise and affiliate marketing so that's why i still do this channel and uh, i'm going to switch back to my i'm going to switch batteries and then we are going to 
show you the correct approach with the other channel. And I do want to show you one more thing on this channel, just my most popular videos. This one has 200,000 views right here and it's the top five easiest BMX beginner tricks. So basically it's a tutorial, which is evergreen. That is why it is the top video. Second top video at, at 183,000 views, how to bunny hop uh, fast. So it's another tutorial. This video right here was just dumb luck, 166,000. We don't want to get lucky. We want to have our views predicted. We want our views, oh, I, I'm not showing you here. We want our views to be uh, to be calculated for, not just complete luck. So I'll show you again. 200,000 views on this top one, 183,000 views right here. This one's just pure luck. This one's just pure luck. Boom, there we go. Another how-to. That was reacting to a trending popular video. So I reacted to that. That is a part two of the first Amazon bike build. So that's just pure luck. And this is another reacting to trending videos. And then um, this is just kind of like a little challenge video. Then, you know, the, the how to's and then reacting to popular people. So trending topics and evergreen topics. That is how uh, these videos got up to the top. That is how you're going to be successful on YouTube. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the most high performing are evergreen content because they're around for, they last a lot longer. So they just rack up more views, which is more money and less work you have to do because I made this video. This was published in 2018. It's 2021, 2018, 2018, 2019, 2018, 2019, 2018. So yeah, as you can see, evergreen content, that is the name of the game. All right, so here is an example of the way to approach a channel correctly. Now, I showed you the vlog channel, how it wasn't evergreen, it was low CPM, and I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just kind of shooting in the dark and luckily happened to build up 40,000 subscribers. Oh, ex excuse me. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what I'm gonna show you now is the correct approach to do so. So this is the legal channel. This is a very niche channel. And the vlog channel obviously was kind of niche. You know, it was BMX, so it was better than most people's attempt. And that's why it did get off the ground and start making money. But this one, as you can see, has a high CPM. So it's going to make a lot of money per thousand views compared to this channel that has a low CPM. Then it has evergreen content. So not only will the channel, will the videos be printing a lot more cash than the vlog channel, but it'll be printing a lot more cash a lot longer. And we're gonna show you some examples of that here in a moment when we go into the analytics of this legal channel. It's got a high barrier to entry. That means you have to have specialized knowledge. The barrier to entry on this is law school, of course. And this one, any dill hole can make a vlog about any topic, right? That's why it's such a low CPM. And it's the perfect balance of passion and income. So not only does it print cash, we have a great time doing it. So now let me get switched over to the other window here and I'm going to show you the analytics. So here is the channel. So keep in mind the lad, I think the vlog channel was like making like, I don't know, $350 for this past month. Now we've have had months where it made $1,200, but like I said, we've had kind of a slowing down on that channel and we've had kind of a low spell for these past week, you know, week to the next week to month to month. It varies. Sometimes you're highs, sometimes you're lows. We just happen to be lows across the board this week. But um, so here's the channel. Take note, 8,000 subscribers, right? The last channel was 40,000 and it made $300 in the last month. Now that's without me uploading a whole lot and that's why it's not evergreen because I uploaded more on that channel and it's gonna have made less. Even though I've uploaded less on this channel, it's gonna have made more. So let me give you some examples of really good videos. So as you can see, uh, this this was kind of like a re-upload. We just happened to re-upload these crazy law videos. So they're really old. You can see the Christmas tree, even though it's summer right now. But for example, this video right here, the history of El Chapo, that is evergreen. It is long. We chalk it full of photos and videos and examples and make the story really interesting, which creates a lot higher watch time. And it's long, so it creates a lot more ads for people to see, which makes more money. And then the longer people spend on your videos, the more YouTube promotes it because it's the longer they stay on their platform. And that's why that has 10K views posted two days ago on a channel with only 8,000 subs. As you can see, uh, we've got 700 over here, but these history of videos, that one has 1.9. Pablo Escobar has 1.8. Ooh, whoops, hold on. Let me go back here. 1.8. CIA drug trafficking has 2.4. So we're really monopolizing this narco kind of content 
Let me zoom back out here, and then let me show you our most popular videos. So, as you can see, we have the history of meth right here with 122,000. It's long, it's very interesting, and people spend more time on it, so it makes higher, uh, makes more money because they're seeing more ads, and YouTube's promoting it more. Same thing, 72,000, 33,000, 9.7. So overall, in about a year and three months, we've generated 318,000 views. So that's how much this channel has made, or how many views we've gotten in a little over a year. So now let's go into the actual analytics. So right off the bat, you can see that even though we only got a few hundred subs, in the past 28 days on the vlog channel because it's not evergreen. This one, we've uploaded less and gotten over 3,000 subscribers in the past 28 days. And this is a low month compared to the last couple months. We've made $1,800, but that's $1,750, $1,700 in evergreen content, uploading less, less work than the channel with 41,000 subscribers, right? Way higher income. And I'll show you the CPM here in a second. 132,000 views, 22,000 watch hours in the past 28 days. Let's see if it'll show us the... Yeah, we'll go into the... Still not quite the analytics. Okay, so here we go, yeah. So as you can see, we're having a high, then it kind of comes down, and then we're going back up lately. So we got another 7,000 views yesterday. The last time we had 7,000 was about in between the 14th and 15th. So, yeah, we've done great on views with such a low count. And as you can see, you know, kind of the past 48 hours. And then you post a video. This is that El Chapo video going crazy. And then as you can see, here is the evergreen content coming into play. So these are real-time views in the past 48 hours in the last 60 minutes. El Chapo is doing great, of course. But the History of Meth, that was posted April 21st of 2020, over a year ago, and it's still getting... A thousand views a day. I think it was last month it was getting almost 10,000 views a day. So, you know, they come and go, but History of Heroin, getting 500 views every 48 hours, still posted a year ago. Same with History of Cocaine, you know, sometimes same with Money Laundering. All these videos are pretty much very old videos. They just live on forever. Like I said, we're in a down spell, and there's been times where there's the History of Meth had been at 20K a day. And it's actually kind of climbing back up. It was at about 500 a day in the past couple of days. It's jumping up to about 1,000 a day. So that's just kind of a little bit of proof about the evergreen content and how valuable it is because it just prints cash, right? And we'll show you the lifetime with the views here to prove to you when we started this. November, that's lifetime. Oh, he's had a YouTube channel. Okay, so we started posting, yeah, right when COVID hit. So right around March. Nothing, 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 nothing. And then this is when I kind of like started figuring out all of these hacks that I'm uh, going to teach you guys in this course. And then it just absolutely took off, you know, peaks and valleys. We have 10,000 view day. We had a 9,000 view day down. Now we're back up and probably be even higher than that 6,000 we're at. Can't even, won't even let me hit it. But so that's the lifetime of it. Watch time, shot up, revenue. So let, let's see, can we see how much we've made? So our CPM is $20. We're making $10 per thousand views. The last, uh, the vlog channel, we're making $3, $3 per thousand views. So as you can see, we kind of had a little bit of monetization in March. Not much, obviously only $46. Our first real month monetized was $1,000. Way, way higher than my most recent month, six years in, on my vlog channel. Second month, $2,000. And we're just into June. We're on June 3rd right now, I believe. So that's why it's only saying 70, because it gives you the 28-day earnings. So it's only 70. But yeah, $2,000 down there. The History of Meth prints cash every single day. History of Heron, all these popular videos just print cash every single day. And we're only just barely a year old. So... That just kind of goes to show the power of the evergreen content. And that's why this channel is so much more successful at such a smaller size. As you can see, real live count, 8,267. About 15,000 views in the past 48 hours. 
lot of that is from the El Chapo video, but that is uh, growing. It's causing a chain reaction that I'm looking at it because now it's growing all these other videos that were much, much lower even two days ago before we posted it. So it's kind of a chain reaction. So we're going to have another one of these. Uh, let me go back here. Another one of these spikes. Let me pull it in a little bit closer. So one of these goes up, goes down, but notice how we were much better off. So here's where we were before. We jumped up and then we kind of came down. We jumped up and we kind of came down and we're jumping back up. So we're about to go into another one of those uh, highs here. Let's see, what was it yesterday? Here we go, 6,600 views yesterday. So, yep, that's, uh, even though we we're a little bit low, that's where we're at right now. But that is the absolute correct approach to take when it comes to making a channel. That's the difference. This channel is a fraction of the size, but makes way more money. And most of that number right there is, that doesn't even account for this El Chapo video. That hasn't even been up basically a full day yet. So we don't have the revenue because the, the revenue is delayed a day. So if we go to, hold on, let's go, let's look at the revenue. So this spike you see right here, we ha we're not going to, that's not going to reflect in the revenue yet. So yesterday we made 50 bucks. So what was it? The 14th and 15th. So looks like we're going to make about a hundred dollars from yesterday's earnings. And that doesn't show this is June 2nd. What day is it? Let me look at the date. Oh, it's the fourth. So we're multiple days behind. Yeah. So we're going to be making like over a hundred dollars probably for the next few days. As you can see, we had over hundred dollars a day a week here. But yeah, that's how this, uh, the correct way to do it. You know, Peaks and Valleys, this is a great example of a realistic brand new channel that only has 8,000 subscribers. All right, so this is an update just a few months later, and I just kind of wanted to serve as a little bit more inspiration as a, a different part of the case study and show you guys a couple months later where our revenue is at. So I showed you, I'm not sure where the revenue was at when I first um, uploaded the course, but if you go into analytics, we are now at 30,000 subscribers. Yeah, 30,000 right here. In the past 28 days, we have made 6,500, and that seems to just be going up. As uh, Let's go here. We have 400, we almost have, uh, have half a million um, views in the past 28 days. So as you can see, we're kind of bouncing anywhere from 400 to $300 a day. It dipped down here because we actually had to take a video off, and that really threw off the algorithm. So um, it's, we're going back up here, and we actually had a pretty good day yesterday when it comes to views, so that will probably be up towards 300 when that updates tonight. But if we go into the past seven days when this updates, it'll be just under 2000 which puts us on track for $8,000 for this month. But we have not uploaded in a couple of weeks. We've got three more videos coming out this month, which is more than we usually post. Usually we only post two a month, and all this income is passive income. So I would not be surprised if we hit $10,000 in revenue for the next upcoming month because $2,000 and we actually had a weird week because of the pulling the thing off. So it should be up over two grand, two, four, six, eight. That's $8,000 plus adding a couple extra thousand with the new uploads. So probably $10,000. So I just want to kind of give you guys an update on this channel um, uh, with the uh, to show you that this method actually works. You know, we've got almost half a million views in the past 28 days. Uh, 100,000 watch hours. So I want this to serve as inspiration from where you saw when I first started the program to where I did now. And I'm up to five YouTube channels and I'm up to, let's see, two podcasts across six different platforms. Um, and, and now I'm spreading out into the blog. So I'll have to make a mega course on the whole bundle one of these days. But I just wanted to up you, update you guys on the earnings. And um, I was telling you about how the narco content did really well for us. Well, let me just, before I sign off here, let me show you... So the history of meth is up to 425,000. El Chapo is up to 420,000, 300,000, 100,000, 100,000. So yeah, we're still hitting strong in our niche, niche, niche. You know, we do, um, it's legal, true crime, and narco content. So hope you guys uh, got some motivation out of this because it, it keeps growing. Just give it time. It's just making more every single month. So keep it going and enjoy the rest of the program. All right, 
Our next section is finding your YouTube niche. Now, obviously, I have po uh, chosen the BMX niche for my vlog channel, the legal niche for one of my cash cow channels, and then the finance niche for uh, the Grace and Robert show for that channel. So we are going to actually talk about the, the, the CPM and the RPM. Now, everybody talks about the CPM, the cost per mile, but people don't talk about the RPM. But the RPM is actually uh, what you need to look at because that's how much you take home. The CPM is how much the advertiser pays per thousand views. And then the RPM is your take home pay, excuse me, because you split it about 50, 50 with YouTube. So the CPM is how much advertisers are paying to display ads on your video per 1000 views. And RPM is your take home pay per 1000 views after you split it with YouTube. So if you have about a $20 CPM, that's why you saw a $10 RPM. And that is actually how much you were going to make per thousand views. So I don't know why people are talking about CPM so much. I just say it because that's what everybody hears. But RPM is the number that you're actually going to take home. So, um, and here are why niches are a little bit different. It basically boils down to competition. If, you're, if your channel has a very targeted audience, for example, the legal channel with lawyers running legal ads on it, then the advertiser can place an ad for someone who is seeking legal advice for specific cases, aka the DUI series. So, right, so we have a legal niche and then a sub niche with the DUI genre. So, you can get very, very targeted with your advertising. If you're a local lawyer in the area, you can advertise your legal ads, but you can advertise your DUI or DWI, depending on your state or where you live, your DUI um, uh, services two people watching videos about getting DUI. So obviously you can see, you know, it's like two to $5,000 to retain a lawyer. So they can spend thousands of dollars per customer. So it's a, a, a valuable, very high targeted specific type of demographic that advertisers can target. And then that's what causes you to make so much more money. Uh, they're an older age group, so they can pony up some more change on like seven-year-old watching that uh, gamer ninja play Fortnite and stuff like that. So I'm going to give you some examples of my favorite highest earning CPMs. Now it depends. Uh, your channel CPM is, each video has a different CPM and your channel CPM is basically just a, an average of that. So here is the list here. So I'm just going to pull up the document right here in case you don't have an open. Uh, we've got e-commerce. So keep in mind there is business, then there was finance, or there's finance, then there's business, and then there's e-commerce. So it's just one subsection. And I do believe this to be the highest paying niche I have ever seen because some of my videos on the Grayson Roberts show are, uh, they are e-commerce. Now, you know what? Actually, I'm going to show you guys something here. I'm going to show you how insane the CPM is on this video. Now, it doesn't really have any views. It has like 70 views. This channel's brand new and it hasn't taken off yet. But the calculated CPM for this is absolutely insane. So I'm going to pull it up right here. Uh, I'm not going to show you the analytics of the Grace and Roberts show yet. I'll probably update this course in the future and show it to you. But it's still such a small channel. Uh, it's brand new. But let me find this video for you. Let's see. Starting a clothing brand. So it's a starting a clothing brand video talking about Shopify and drop shipping. And that is a very popular business model on the internet these days. So a lot of people are putting ads on it and it pays like crazy. So here's the video. We have only 87 views. Oh, wait. Uh, how do I get this to switch over to... Is that it? There we go. So look at this. This video has 87 views and has made $3.60. Obviously, it's a brand new video. It has not been posted or it has not been uh, taken off yet. But if you go to revenue, look at that CPM, $76 and $41. So that means I'm going to be making $41 per thousand views. Keep in mind, I was making $3 per thousand views on the blog channel. This is $41 per thousand views, right? So... That's just a little bit of proof right there just for that specific one. Now, let's see if I can figure out how to go back to this guy. Here we go. Back to the course. So uh, I threw in 
just some names right here. So here is a perfect example of a channel to go check out. His name is Hayden Bowles. He's everything drop shipping, e-commerce, Facebook ads, and that's the stuff that pays absolutely bonkers. So as you can see, some examples of e-commerce would be Shopify and Shopify stores, affiliate marketing with you know Amazon, ClickBank, or anything in between. Amazon FBA is another version, you know, another subcategory of e-commerce. So Hayden Bowles is business, e-commerce. Uh, drop shipping. So that's how niche he is. So you got to really find a small target audience and then tackle it and then expand outward. Then obviously there's social media marketing agencies. And the next one is an also very, very well-known, super high CPM, which is real estate. And in some examples I threw in, I'm obsessed with this. So I watch a lot of them. I got a lot of examples here. Graham Stephan, meet Kevin, Ben Mala, Ryan Panetta, and you know, Grant Cardone, I guess he's a little bit out there, but still got some good information every once in a while. You know, I've read multiple of his books. I personally am a fan, even though he's a little bit of a nut, but um, you can do things like property tours, uh, real estate investing, you know, buying and selling and renovating and real estate vlogs, how to be a real estate agent. If you're a real estate agent, you can give tours of, you know, fancy homes in your areas, teach people how to be a real estate agent, just, you know, property tours, or you can go into the world of mortgages, you know, different types of mortgages, all, everything about real estate is very high paying, good CPM. And another one is insurance. This one, according to a lot of charts and statistics, is one of the highest paying niches of all time. And uh, I think uh, my dad has an insurance video. But I'm not sure where it is, but we're not going to find it right now. But I couldn't find a great answer for this. So there could be a very big opportunity for any insurance agents out there to talk about insurance. Now, I don't know much about that world, but here's the examples I came up with, you know, explaining the different types of insurance and uh, informing people on which policies are best for them. You know, if you're a 16-year-old male driver, should you get liability or should you get uh, full coverage? Stuff like that. Of course, the legal channel, this one's pretty hard as well because you have to go to law school and pretty much just know the law pretty well. And the law varies from state to state and country to country, obviously. But then obviously, my dad's channel is a fantastic one to study for that. You know, what to do when getting pulled over, epic historic cases, history of drugs and how they became illegal, keeping up with trends in cases, answering general legal questions does really well, reacting to laws broken in TV shows, what that Legal Eagle channel does with millions of subscribers. He basically, you know, reacting to every law broken and breaking bad, stuff like that. Uh, law basically touches everything. So it even kind of goes into the world of finance a little bit. Fitness is a great one. Now it's not quite as high CPM as these other ones, but there are insane amount of affiliate products, brand deals, you know, Fitness is an insane industry. So there's all sorts of products you can sell and make a crazy amount of money. And there's a huge target audience for it. The body coach is, I think, a great example of a fitness channel. So if you're thinking about starting a fitness channel, type in the body coach and study what they've done. Study, you know, their most viewed videos and stuff like that. Videos about how to lose weight, how to bulk up, different workouts, for specific goals or body types. And then of course the makeup industry is similar to that. It's not as high CPM as legal insurance and finance or real estate, but there is a huge market. General beauty vlogs, uh, makeup tutorials and reviewing different products. Reviewing products is great for affiliate marketing. You know, if I make a video talking about, this is the uh, iPhone 11, I love it. You should buy it, click the link in the description. And we're gonna talk about affiliate marketing a little bit later, but um, you can actually sign up for Amazon Associates and sell any product on Amazon and get a commission for it. So I can simply make, hey, I have a tech channel. Here's the new iPhone. Click the link in my description if you want it. Use my link, buy it off Amazon, and then you get a percentage of that. We're going to talk about the income a little bit later. Then here are some just like extra little niches that I really enjoy. Podcasting, that's a whole different beast. Uh, I am I used to have a podcast. I decided to convert it to this channel or the, the Grace and Robert show. And I'll be making a podcast soon, but obviously I've got all the equipment and stuff for it. So we're going to get all that worked out. Turn my camera back on here. And uh, so I'll, I'll probably come out with another podcast course soon because it took me months to even figure out how to do that. Um, you know, making money in general, stocks, marketing, personal finance, you know, saving money, credit cards, stuff like that. Uh, how to make videos, you know, how to start YouTube, how to edit videos, how to make camera, you know, camera gear reviews. Um, career advice, business advice, cryptocurrency, or niche vlogs like BMX, how to do BMX tricks. That's a niche uh, evergreen uh, thing. Obviously, that's what the only reason my vlog channel was successful. You know, niche gaming, you know, 
I watched, I used to watch this one guy. I forgot his name. I think it was called Trey 10. Basically, he did gaming. He did GTA videos. He did GTA roleplay videos. GTA roleplay challenge videos. So it's very specific type of videos. So now let's talk about how to increase your existing CPM. Telly ho course goers. Uh, this is a quick disclaimer that this video is free for everybody on YouTube. However, after I made the video, I decided that it is extremely valuable and it should obviously be included in the course. So uh, just a disclaimer, if you see this video on YouTube, just so you're not surprised, there's no surprises, there's this video and then the script writing video will also be free on YouTube. However, everything else is unique and uh, just for the course. So don't worry. Um, but I figured that this is so valuable. I obviously should add it into the ultimate YouTube course. So here is the section about faceless YouTube channels, faceless YouTube channels. You know, there's people all the time that come up to me and say, man, I would really love to start a YouTube channel, but I have no interest in being famous. I have no interest in showing my face and I, I'm just embarrassed. I don't have the good personality. Not that I do. And that's what I tell people. It's like, Hey, listen, I suck on camera too, but did you know that you can actually start a YouTube channel, just become as successful as everybody else without even showing your face. And I'm going to show you my favorite strategies to do so in today's video. I'm really excited about these faceless YouTube channels. Now I just started one of them. My whole YouTube career, I make all my money with channels with uh, being the face. I have two personally, uh, I have three personally, and then I have one faceless, and then I have one that is my dad's uh, dad's face. And I, I'm, I'm gonna, con well, I guess it's my dad, that's a weird way of putting it, but I'm gonna continue building these faceless channels because you know, I'm not necessarily interested in becoming famous. You know, I just want the money, right? So I've got two channels. I'm good. I don't need to do anything else. So today I'm going to show you guys how you can make faceless channels yourself. Now, the first method is um, probably the easiest, the cheapest, but the most risky. And it's simply ripping other people's niche content and reusing them in your own video. So this is what I'm doing right now for one of my channels. Let me pull it up here. So this thing is brand new and I'll show you how I set it up. So basically I market it as the best of the best and the name is clever currency. It is literally brand new. I've done like zero promoting and um, just a heads up. It's going to take six to 12 months to, before you start getting any views. The only reason I even have five views for you, four views, 15 views is simply because I've been doing this for six years. I know how to build channels. So it, they're getting a couple views, which is actually impressive. Wow. 16 views, 10 views. That's crazy for only a month. But um, yeah, heads up, it's going to take anywhere from six to 12 months before you start making good money. Anyway, so basically what we do is we are in the finance niche and we find a group of YouTubers that we call safe YouTubers. Now, here's what we do. So I pulled a, like five minute clips from every big finance YouTuber, maybe like 10 to 15 people. I put them all in this compilation and I uploaded it on YouTube for a week. And I was waiting to see, okay, am I going to get a ding from Graham Stephan? Am I going to get a ding from Andre Jick? Am I going to get a ding from any of these people? And if someone copyrights me on day one, I'm like, okay, I'm never going to touch that person's content because at the end of the day, you don't want to be copyrighted because you want to make money. So find safe YouTubers in your niche. You only need a handful. And in this case, I market it as the best of the best. Now I use more people than just these guys. Obviously I use a lot of people, but we have our group of safe YouTubers. We know they're not going to copyright us because we're doing nothing but kind of casting them in a good light saying, Hey, they're an authority. It helps promote them. And they're not going to want the revenue of this little video anyway. Right? So they're not worried about it. It's good promotion for them. And it makes them look better because they're being featured on other channels as an authority in their topic. So that is the number one thing is ripping other people's content. Now that's kind of a harsh way to put it, but basically, you know, five business books, every entrepreneur should read. We just found our five favorite YouTubers talking about the five books that we agree with best. And that's exactly how it works. How to start a print on demand clothing brand. You know, step one, we find a YouTuber talking about it. Step two, we find another YouTuber talking about it and et cetera. Hey, look, that's even me. I have a really good section for how to couch flip for beginner for beginners, but it's not all me. You know, I'm in there with like five other guys. So that is the first method. Download other people's videos, make sure they're safe, make sure they're okay with it because this is not part of the creative commons. So you could, the last thing you wanna do is build a huge brand with like a hundred different YouTubers with a hundred different clips per video. And then one person dings you for two seconds. Y you want big chunks that are safe and you know we're going to last. 
So this is probably the easiest. You can literally start on your phone with iMovie, get an app that downloads YouTube videos, put them in there, put them in order and upload it. It takes like 10 minutes to make these videos. The thing that takes the most time is these thumbnails. This takes me probably 15 minutes, but um, yeah, I mean, an hour max to get a video out a day, easy, sitting in the bathtub, you know, it's real easy. <clears throat> so that's method number one is reusing a group of safe YouTubers for kind of compilation videos. Now, number two, is compilation YouTube videos, and I'm sure you've seen this like fail army, like they just take a bunch of other people's content and put them into a fail compilation. Now, this one you only really want to do using Creative Commons, and let me show you what that is. So, let me go to YouTube here because here's the thing if you start using a bunch of random clips from a bunch of different people, chances are you might get copyright dinged. So, here is what you do for compilation channels. I mean, how you're really going to do finance? So, this is a uh, could be one of those you know, it's multi-million views and it's a low CPM, but you're getting so many views. So for example, let's do, um, let's just do fails for the sake of it fails. Or, you know, what actually is a, a is a fun one is boat. Let's do big boat. I don't know what to put. How do I word this big boat, big wave? I don't know how to put that. 11 million views, 28 million views. So this is what I'm talking about. Even if it's in a low CPM niche, you can simply just rip other people's content. Now, what you, I personally choose, I mean, you can test the waters, pun intended, to see if you'll get copyrighted. But if you wanna be totally safe, do Creative Commons down here. And that means all of these people are allowing you to use their content for free, no copyright risk. But if you want to use other people's content, cause you know, maybe there's like some viral moments that, um, are not technically in the creative commons and you want to use them. The rule of thumb is use eight seconds or less of other people's content. So if you have a, uh, maybe you're taking a fail video from the fail army video, right? Use eight seconds or less of that clip compilations, fast pace, high views, low CPM, but everybody can enjoy it. So that is number two. It's kind of like the first one, except instead of having like five steps and five different clips, you're going to have like 50 different clips over an eight minute video, right? Just compilation, quick entertainment stuff. So that is method number two is the compilation method. Method number three is stepping it up a notch. It's narrative. And I'm going to give you a really good example of this. Um, this really good channel, Alux right here. They have almost 4 million subscribers. They're a faceless channel. And here is exactly what they do. Okay, so I'm not going to play the sound, but this is copyright free images. And there's simply a voiceover playing right now. Well, actually, maybe I should... Hold on, let me play the sound so you guys can see it. So they're literally using a combination of copyright free images and videos to talk about a topic. And these people are in the luxury niche. Now, I thought this was kind of a strange, obscure upload for their channel, but I don't know, maybe they ran out of ideas. Anyway, so they're literally using copyright free images, talking about a specific niche. And now this one you can do in a high CPM finance niche. And it's stepping it up a little bit. And I like the voiceover big time because it's easier to build kind of a personal interaction personal brand with this now it's not the same as showing your face but they know there's a human behind Top it mounted display offers up choices of eight espresso drinks four black coffee and five milk based bevies the model also has a milk frother and jug it has but be warned if you're a newbie this one requires a lot of practice to get it right See, so it's literally just copyright free images and videos and a voiceover. And I, I really like that. I've done that personally. And I think it's a pretty good method to go about starting a faceless YouTube channel. So that's a, that's kind of stepping up. But the thing to keep in mind in there is you're either going to have to write a script yourself or hire that out. You're going to have to do the voiceover yourself or hire it out. And chances are you don't have the best voiceover voice. I know I don't personally. Well, my camera just shut off here. We've been going for a while. I know I personally don't. So I would have to hire someone else out to do that. But it's kind of taking it up to the next level. And all three of these so far are pretty easy, not time consuming. So as you can see, you can start building an army of channels pretty fast. Now, the fourth one is my favorite and I have not done it. I'm going to do it within the next couple of months and it's animation videos. Here is the new channel. It's called Wi-Fi Money. So same concept, uh, finance stuff, very similar topics that we talk about uh, on this channel. And I'll show you exactly my whole process. So I literally created this, uh, let's see, 58 minutes ago is my first video. So we've got a top five side hustles video. 
And as you can see, it's all animated with my voiceover, which I'm really excited. And if you don't want a voiceover, there's actually a text to speech option I will uh, talk about, but here is the new channel. Obviously no subscribers. It's made brand, brand new. I'm so excited about it. So let's get into actually how to make these faceless videos. So you're gonna wanna click the link in the description and download Doodle Maker. Keep in mind, I did hours and hours, I did days, three days of research. I bought software. Uh, I ended up getting refunds on all of them because I really, really like this one. And they also have an affiliate program. So I am uh, I think it's $67, but they're doing that $18 off promotion and then you get 50% of that commission. So I think you're gonna make like 25 bucks if they use the uh, uh, discount code, which is just, it's, it's good commission for a great price for a really, really good software. So I recently just made the top five thing. And here's the thing, there's a reason I have part one, part two, part three, it's for every uh, category. I've got five categories plus the intro. It's because they only limit you to 20 slides per project. So we are going to here, first of all, let me show you the process. So here is the channel right now. And basically what I'm doing is these are all my videos and you'll have to write a script. It just makes it so much easier. Just write a script, spend 10 minutes, you know, writing a script about something you talk about or simply do research on a topic. You can literally read an article if you want to. It doesn't matter because no one knows you're reading an article because no one sees your face. So uh, let's go to, I, I made this video. I have a top five side hustle video on this channel. Let's see, it is right here. And I already have a script for that in my documents. And I don't want to say the exact same things because it doesn't really make perfect sense. So I also have a website called let's make wifi money.com. It's this right here. So this is an example of what you can do. You can literally go to a website. This is my website and I wrote this, so it makes perfect sense. But I literally did this. I clicked on this article, five creative and easy side hustles. It's spoken in third person. So I literally read this entire article verbatim, exactly. And you can do the same thing. Hey, if you wanna use my website for uh, uh, scripts, that's fine too. I literally read this entire article because it's designed for third person, obviously. So. It's the perfect, uh, perfect pre-made script. So that's pretty much what I do. So we're gonna do, we're gonna make like slide number one. I'm just gonna show you how it works. I'm not gonna go through a whole video because it, you get it really fast. So, um, and there's kind of a different process I take to this. So we're gonna do five best drop shitting, sh shitting, five best drop shipping products to sell Q4. Now it's November 15th. It's gonna be kind of late, but I'm using this as an example and I should get this out anyway. And I'm actually going to make this a real video. So if you wanna see how this entire video turned out, uh, you can check out uh, uh, Wi-Fi Money and subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it. Okay, so I'm gonna make slide number one, which is the intro right here. So we're gonna go over to Doodle Maker and I'm going to create a new project. And I'm gonna call this, um, so there's the ready-made template. I don't recommend it because it's generic, it's not that good. And AI video translation, and it, it, it doesn't work. Honestly, start from scratch. So um, project title, what is it? We're gonna just do top products. So here is kind of the weird thing I found out is you can voice over it yourself one slide at a time, but for some reason, it doesn't matter how expensive your mic is. This is a $250 mic. It always turns out really bad. So I will show you exactly what I do. So we're actually gonna use the text to speech to get the timing for the slides. And then I'm going to go over and add my audio recording later. And there's a million different ways that you can do this. I personally use Adobe Premiere. Uh, I think it's like $22 a month. It's a full video editing software. I, I would not recommend it if you are only using voiceovers because you can do you can find free software for this. In fact, you can use Audacity. So um, slide number one. So I like to do one line at a time and this whole thing will come together. It sounds complicated, but we'll figure it out. So let's see, Q4 2021 could potentially be... All right, so we're gonna go ahead and copy that and add that into the slide so that way the AI software will talk in real time so that way we can uh, kind of figure out the timing. So this is uh, top products we need to do part one. I think there's four or five products. So we'll, this will just be part one. So you hit create. And so you're gonna have this TTS voice. You can upload your own voice, but like I said, it's just not very good. And it's gonna kind of give you like, it's gonna read your script and throw up the icons it thinks that you want to have but there's literally thousands of icons and they're all better than pretty much what it gives you. So I'm gonna walk you through it. So you can have a black background, you can have a uh, white background, you can have glass, which basically means it's like drawing from the back. 
but uh, or custom color, but I have a specific one for my channel. I do not have it in a, uh, here we go. So I just got this from the internet. Just a nice, easy background. It's just perfect. So we've got the text to speech right here. Hold on, I gotta turn the audio up for you guys so you can hear it. So, all right, I, this is what you wanna do. You wanna read it. So Q4 2021 could potentially be the biggest holiday season uh, opportunity of a lifetime. So we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna do a title. And my personal font I like to use is Roboto. So we're gonna do uh, Q4 products 2021. And um, it makes you check this. It makes you check that. I do not check right to left because who, you don't write right to left, you write left to right. So obviously we do not wanna do that. Um, so we're gonna do add section. And it pretty much is just gonna pop up like this. You can adjust the size, you can adjust the color. And here's the most important part. So you click what element you want to have and there's your color options. So here's the transition. So you can either have fade in, but I really like the hand drawing right here. So we're gonna have this be hand drawn. So I'm gonna exit out of the timeline here. And um, let's see, I'm gonna change the hand too because it defaults to this hand. So this isn't a full blown tutorial, but this is just gonna kind of get you started on how easy it is. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna just gonna save it. And let's go ahead and preview it. Q4 2021 could potentially be one of the biggest holiday season opportunities of a lifetime. With the life, career changing element. Okay, so since it's a holiday season, we're gonna go to library here. And you can, you know, icons, icon finders. So I like jump story. So we're gonna do Christmas because it's a, you know, Christmas specific. So let's see, we are gonna do, I gotta find a Christmas tree I like. Okay, just to kind of keep it out of the way, we're gonna do this. So it's gonna say biggest holiday opportunity, blah, blah, blah. So we're just gonna put that there and let's add another one because you wanna make it look pretty good. And you can see how easy it is. It's just drag and drop, search whatever you want. Um, is there anything else that we could have kind of hanging down? Guess I could use that light bulb. I'm actually gonna use this stocking, I like that. So we're gonna put that over here. All right. But when you start, you don't wanna, here, I'll just show you. It's gonna do one after another, so you wanna come up with the timing, right? Q4 2021 could potentially be one of the biggest holiday season opportunities of a lifetime. With the life, career changing elements, COVID-19. Okay, so, all right, so that actually was perfect timing. So we are going to do, um, so let's do a person. Let's just do guy, because we're talking about career changing. So let's do, let's see if we can find, yeah, that guy, suit and tie. So what does it say? With the life slash career changing. Okay, so let's put this guy and let's have him think about something. All right, so let's just draw him right here. And, and you know, you don't have to think about it too much, just easy stuff. So we're gonna have that guy right there. Let's go back and let's go to assets and let's have him think about something. So let's have him just go, hmm, something easy. Cause he's thinking about all these, you know, uh, career and life changing things cause of COVID. Oops, I actually added two there. Let's delete one of those. Yes. And it's just drag and drop. That's what I love about it. So let's just have that right there. All right. But we need to add text. Let's go back to text. And let's do, hmm, <laughs> let's just have that for now. All right, we'll put that right there. So we're gonna wanna delay this a little bit. So let's have this pop up at five seconds. Let's have this pop up at six seconds. And let's have this pop up at, s oops, seven seconds. It's gonna be trial and error to figure it out. So let's see. So that, that's hand, I want that to come in from the top. So where's the top coming from? Bottom, fade in bottom left. I guess we'll just have to do left. We don't want to do that. You can just play with it. Obviously, I like them to draw that. Let's draw this guy and let's draw this speech bubble. Okay, save it and test this out. Q4 
2021 could potentially be one of the biggest holiday season opportunities of a lifetime. With the life, career-changing elements COVID-19 threw our way as well as the internet-breaking trends emerging out of absolutely nowhere, this is your time as an online seller to shine. Okay, I know exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do a laptop because we're talking about selling online. So let's do laptop. And as you can see, I like this jump story category. Um, okay, do laptop. Perfect. Because we're talking about making sales online. So let's just put this here. And then let's do... Now we got to figure out um, growth, maybe? We get an upwards chart thingy. Okay. That's actually not bad. Okay, I like this. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. I actually like that, this'll be good. It'll look like it's actually a part of the laptop, which makes it look even better. So we'll put that right here. And then the cool thing is, is they actually have like real icons for real companies like YouTube, Premiere, all sorts of stuff. So I like to use this one. They have a really good Shopify one. So we'll go here and we'll take this uh, I like this one. We squeeze that in there. Okay, now I have to watch it and figure out the timing. Q4 2021 could potentially be one of the biggest holiday season opportunities of a lifetime. With the life, career-changing elements COVID-19 threw our way as well as the internet-breaking trends emerging out of absolutely nowhere, this is your time as an online seller to shine. Okay, so the timing's actually perfect, but I don't like how it's all like fading in there. So let's do hand drawing, hand drawing, and then let's do, well, I like the fade in. So we'll do that. Let's save it, and this is our first slide. So obviously, um... Oh, first, let's just say, yeah, so keep displayed, you know, you can hide, but I've had no luck with hide. It's just kind of confusing. So this is all you need to know. This is your timeline settings. Once it's locked, you set your display time, which basically just means how many seconds in will it show. If you unlock it, you can actually move the order of things around. So there's that. So now let's preview it one last time. Q4 2021 could potentially be one of the biggest holiday season opportunities of a lifetime. With the life, career-changing elements COVID-19 threw our way as well as the internet-breaking trends emerging out of absolutely nowhere, this is your time as an online seller to shine. Okay, so yeah, so that's really good. Obviously, the voice, um, first of all, there's 60 different languages and there's all sorts of different accents. Q4 2021. But a lot of people reviewing the software really praise that text of voice. I hate it. I only use it to uh, time it. Now you can, uh, okay, let's see if it'll actually let me do this while I'm recording. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, this mic sucks. So listen to the quality. Okay, I don't even think it worked because I'm recording on this software. But to be honest, I'm not a fan of it. It just doesn't sound right. So here's what I personally do. And there's a bunch of different methods to do this for completely free. And hey, if your mic actually works, like this mic is really powerful and it's got all sorts of like filters and things it's being mixed through. So that's probably why, but you can actually do this. Um, but this is just the way I do it. It takes more time, but if you're having the same experience, I wanna show you exactly what I do. So let's say save and then let's render it. You obviously want to do 1080p. So I'm going to pause the video now because this actually does take a minute. And then, um, so once that's done in the bottom left corner, you're going to hit that download button. So it's got to render first and then you download it. And then it's going to save that file to your computer. And then I will come back in and show you guys how I do the voiceover. All right. So it only took a couple minutes, but I've downloaded it. So I'm in Premiere right now. And this is the part where you're going to kind of have to figure out what you're going to do. But, um, you, there's many ways that you can get this voiceover for free. And hey, try it on the app. If you could try it on the app, your life is so much easier. But you will need an editor to kind of like put them all in a timeline, if that makes sense. So I can put it here. 
and it's going to it's going to play the audio so if you have premiere pro hey that's perfect if you want to spend 22 bucks a month uh click the link in my description i think i have uh, got a special deal down there for you but um otherwise you know iMovie windows movie maker just get something free the editor literally only needs to be able to take an audio file right so uh, this is where you're gonna have to get a little bit creative unless you're doing this exact method. But I, I, you know, I would rather you find something free than pay for it, but you know, whatever. Anyway, so now the timing is perfect because we had that uh, kind of fake voice going over it. So the timing is great. It's exactly what I need to be because it's reciting the script. So now what I need to do is my script, you know, yours would be in docs, but I'm just going off of my website. So here is my script right here. So I'm going to pause the video because it won't let me record the video and record the audio in Premiere. So what I'm going to do is open up another window on this second monitor. I'm going to uh, hit go on the editor and then read the script. So, um, and you don't have to do it, you know, perfect timing. You can literally read it on your phone. And as long as you're reading the exact script that the voiceover was reading, just plug it in and it's gonna sync up. I was surprised at how easy it was. So I'm gonna stop it. I'm gonna go ahead and read this right here simply into my microphone and uh, you'll see how it syncs up perfectly. All right, so I just recorded my audio file directly in the editor, but you can literally, like I said, use your phone and then upload it into iMovie. Like there's a million, million different ways to do this for free. I, want, I can't emphasize that enough, but this is what I have so far. And this was one take, you know, it, super easy because I'm literally reading a script. You know, with these videos, I'm not, I, I am reading a script, but I'm not looking at it because then it's not less engaging. So this is just so much easier and honestly it takes less time. Quarter four of 2021 could potentially be one of the biggest holiday season opportunities of a lifetime. With the life slash career changing elements COVID-19 threw our way, as well as the internet breaking trends emerging out of absolutely nowhere. This is your time to shine as an online seller. So, you know, it's not the best, but I've only been uh, using this software, oh, my camera shut off, using this software for about a week. But let me tell you, personally, I think it's good enough. So that is basically how you do it. And then for the next slide, you just go back in. So I, I do this all in one. I don't go back and do every single thing. I create all the slides and then I do all the voiceover at one time just to kind of save time. If I can figure out what tab I was on. So I, you know, I create them all import them all and then just do the voiceover because you know you're just reading a script didn't take very long so that is how you can create doodle animation uh faceless high cpm cash cow youtube channels like i said if you would like to get this animation software the link is in the description if you would like to learn how to actually grow and make money on youtube because that's a whole different thing you know the video is only like 10 percent of the actual business um that link is also in the description so let's see between my course which is half off for black friday um, uh, this software, which is $50 with the promotion. And, uh, we're, we're not going to price in any, um, uh, software because you really shouldn't need any. And I guarantee you all have Apple headphones or in every smartphone you can re voice record into. So let's see for my course, half off is about $47. That's $49. So you can literally start your entire business with only $96 because you need the software, but then you need to know actually how to do it. And Hey, if you don't want to, uh, uh buy my course, buy someone else's, but I guarantee it's the cheapest right now. So let me show you kind of a cool extra little example. So me and my dad started this channel about a year ago and we only upload once to twice a month. And I would like to show you the potential of passive income that you could make on YouTube. It's pretty cool. So if we go to creator studio here, keep in mind, we only upload once to twice a month. I didn't realize that you couldn't see the screen. So we upload once or twice a month. We only have 30,000 subscribers, but we are making, we're at 70, we're at $7,000 for the past 28 days. But if you actually go look at the analytics, which I will show you, our income keeps increasing. So let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's go back to the past uh, 90 days. So, you know, we were making three months ago, like $50 a day. Two months ago, we went up to about $150 a day. And then one month ago, you know, we're about 150 to 200. And now we're bouncing anywhere from 300 to 450 a day. So as you can see, it exponentially grows and I can show you. This is whenever we were starting to get off the ground. And then we went from 2,300 to 3,000 to 5,400 to it's only halfway through the month. So if we actually do the math here, let's see, 3,836 times two is 7,672. But if you go back and look at the past 28 days, 
We've had some slower days from last month that are about to be replaced. So as you can see today, last month we were doing 150, but we've had some 300, $400 days and you know, we're 295 versus 150. So we're actually going to be pushing more about eight to 9,000 this month, uploading once, maybe twice this whole month. So this is why I think this YouTube business is so valuable because it makes great passive income. It constantly grows constantly, constantly. Then you can start other YouTube channels and then really uh, diversify your income. So for $96 total, you can get this software and then you can also learn how to do YouTube as a whole. So, you know, you can really, I, I'm just excited about this video. I'm excited about this software and I'm really excited about the course. So uh, good luck guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. And I'm, I'm not going to, this is such a long video. I'm not going to play the full doodle video. I'm only going to play a couple minutes of the middle of the top five video because you can go check it out on the other channel. Uh, so anyway, guys, thanks for hanging out and I'm going to play the video. Upwork is a website meant to connect professionals, companies, or individuals who need help with projects. Maybe they only need one quick job done, looking for a part-time position, etc. Businesses will post a job listing for you to find and apply. You simply send them a proposal stating how much you will do the job for and why they should pick you over another freelancer. If they accept, you simply do what the job listing requires and get paid. Now, here's some tips when getting started. Make sure your profile is 100% complete and looks very professional. Don't have your sweet shades on in your profile picture. Add as many past projects as possible to your portfolio and have your best work be the first thing a potential client views once browsing your page. Overall, it's pretty straightforward. With that being said, don't be discouraged if you don't get any jobs right away. It could actually take a couple weeks before someone hires you for a freelance project as there is lots of competition, so make sure you keep at it. Once you do your first job or two and get some positive reviews on your profile, more and more people will want to work with you. I highly, highly recommend doing your first couple jobs for free. This way, you can get a quick couple reviews and get the ball rolling much faster. And the best part is, is that it's completely free to sign up and requires zero startup fund aside from software and hardware you need. At my peak, I actually had more clients than I could handle. I was charging clients anywhere from $50 to $80 an hour and sometimes paying other freelancers $10 to $20 an hour to just do the work for me. This side hustle can quickly expand into a full-fledged business if you choose. Highly recommend if you already have a useful skill. Now, next up on our list is flipping things via marketplace, eBay, flea markets, etc. Now, this is a pretty broad one, so we'll go ahead with an example to get you on your way. I was browsing Facebook Marketplace and noticed a GoPro was listed for $150. Well, since I'm a YouTuber, I knew that GoPros were selling for at least $200. I bought it, listed it, and sold it for $210 in just a couple days. My take-home pay was an easy $50 profit after fees. This is when I realized there is a major opportunity for people who understand niche market. Let's say you're passionate about guitars or camera, art, or video games. Start flipping them. Buy low, sell high, baby. It's pretty simple, but here's some advice. Stick to what you know. It's impossible to know the fair market value of everything on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, or whatever. Go niche. Stick to cameras if that's what you know. This lowers the chances of you getting burnt and helps you recognize potential deals as soon as they come up. Next up is starting a print-on-demand clothing brand. Now, this one's pretty cool. Did you know you can literally start a full-blown clothing brand for free? Now, if you host your website through Shopify and purchase a domain, which is recommended, your startup cost will be roughly $50. Still, that's a bargain considering it used to cost thousands to purchase your first run of t-shirts. Now, Printful is a print-on-demand service that you can integrate into Shopify, and here's how it works. All right, so now let's talk about, let's say maybe you already have a channel, because all the courses I took, you know, it's like, oh, well, I already have a channel, so it's this is kind of the basic stuff. Uh, we're going to get a little bit more advanced, but if you already have a channel and uh, maybe you're not in the highest CPM niche, but you don't necessarily have to get up, give up on that. Um, I'm going to teach you some t uh, tricks how to increase your CPM literally overnight. This made my, uh, you know, like I said, when I was going full swing with my blog channel, I went from making about 300 bucks a month to all the way up to 1200 bucks a month. And then, you know, 800 and hovering around 800 to a thousand dollars a month when I should be making 300, uh, using these tactics. But obviously I don't really upload on that channel all that much anymore. And it dropped way down to about 300. 
So here is the first step to increase it. A lot of people are going to say, make your videos over 10 minutes, but they actually had a policy change a few months back and they scaled that down a little bit. So if your video was 10 minutes, you were eligible for mid roll ads. If it was under 10 minutes, you could only have one at the beginning and one at the end and nothing in the middle. So your, your audience was seeing significantly less ads and you were making significantly less money. That's why you'd see a lot of YouTubers make videos 10 minutes and one second long. The new policy is eight minutes. So from the time you're watching this, it is eight minutes. So eight minutes or less, oops, you want your videos to be a minimum or eight minutes or more, a minimum of eight minutes. You can still plug in those mid-roll ads and the longer your video, the more ads they'll see. So the first step is make sure every video is at minimum eight minutes. Then you want to make sure you make exciting content to keep people engaged so the audience retention is higher so they see more ads. So if you have a 10 minute video with four ads, but they're only watching it for 25% of the time, they're only going to see that ad at the very beginning, right? But if you keep doing things, which I'm going to give you hacks to do that later in this course, um, how to keep them engaged. So you check all those boxes, check all those ads and have them watch four ads instead of one. And if you can do that a hundred thousand times for a hundred thousand views, that's four times the amount of money, right? So it really makes a difference. Uh, and then the longer your videos, the more ads you can plug in, of course. Um, and then simply plug in more ads. I usually like to do three to four ads per 10 minutes and rarely does anybody complain. And uh, if it kind of goes, you know, 10 minutes, three to four ads, 20 minutes, three to four ads, and sometimes we have 30 minute videos, then I like to, you know, scale it down to one to two ads that last 10 minutes just to kind of reward the audience. But uh, that's up to you. But more ads, people don't really complain. And uh, it's pretty normal on YouTube to see a lot of ads. I'm sure you see it on all my videos. So, but overall, you want clean content long content and more ads. Now we're going to talk about the cussing and the policies and all that when we get down to the monetization section of this class, but uh, clean content, bleep your bad words, long content, more ads. That is the key to increasing your current CPM. Okay. So this next section is called finding the right equipment for you. And it's kind of more of a document based thing, but I'm just going to make a little video on it just so you guys, I can kind of walk you through it. So I'm actually going to open it up right here. So these are my personal recommendations, uh, recommendations for gear. I suggest you use not bottom of the barrel, not top of the line. All of these are what I personally recommend and believe are the best bang for your buck. So this right here is the current camera. You are seeing this exact shot on everything you see right now is uh, the Canon M50. That's what you are seeing right now. So if we go uh, go back to it here, the Canon M50. And um, I've got links to every single one of these products as well. So all of these are links that you can click and go find it. And I recommend that because if you type in Canon M50, you're going to see a million different bundles, a million different things. Same with all of these. Use my link because one, this is an Amazon affiliate link. So I'm going to make a little bit extra percentage on it to help fund, um, you know, making this course and stuff. And um, it's going to take you exactly to the right product you want. And this specific one comes with a battery, a charger and an SD card. So this is a main shooter fantastic camera for basically every situation, podcasts, vlogging, you know, sit down, headshot things, tutorials, all that stuff. And then uh, here is the mic I personally recommend. This is a shotgun mic. This is basically that fluffy thing that sits on top of your camera because you do not want to use in camera, uh, in camera microphone. I mean, you can get a $60 camera and it's still going to sound or a $60 microphone and it's still going to sound better. So definitely invest in a mic because audio quality is one thing that if it's bad, it'll turn people off. Audio quality is surprisingly more important for audience retention than video quality. Then this is a mic I like to use for the studio. If it's a shot like this, obviously I'm not using a uh, on camera mic. You know, if I was vlogging, I would, I have one, but I'm using this studio mic or, you know, like a mic back here that I've got. So it's just, a, you know, two options, depending on your setup. If you're sitting down talking, you're going to want a studio mic. If you're out and about, obviously this won't work. You'll want a shotgun mic. So, oops, take it back here. Um, this is a cordless mic, you know, like Danny Duncan or like Doug DeMiro. This is or a cord, corded lav mic. So it's one of those mics that actually clips on right here. Like Graham Stephan, he uses a lav mic. It's called a lavalier microphone. Doug DeMiro, if you're wandering around. But this is a cheap, cheap, cheap option. It sounds great. It's what I use. It's corded. But 
if you're going to be wanting to like roam around, like, you know, where you're skating around the skate park and you want to catch the audio or like Danny Duncan, you can't have it be attached to a cord or even Doug Demiro. He's obviously not attached to a cord because he's moving in and out and around a car. So uh, this is the wireless version, a little bit more expensive and I've never used it, but it's very highly rated according to my research. So this is the one I personally recommend if I had to recommend you any of them. And then here's an audio interface. You're going to need one of these if you get a mic that isn't USB. This specific mic is USB. There's a lot of both, but um, an audio interface if you're going to get an XLR mic. Then you're going to need just a nice little uh, cheap tripod for cameras and phones. If you're going to be in the studio, like right now, you're going to need a tall tripod. But if you're out and about vlogging, you're going to need a little handheld tripod. And then here's a lighting kit. This is, you need these whether you're vlogging or not because you're gonna do your intros, your outros, segments, little fun challenges in your house, apartment, whatever you're doing, you're still gonna need light. Natural lighting works, but then it's limited to a certain type of day and it's still not as good as studio lights. Obviously, these are studio lights right here. And actually, this one's kind of facing a weird direction. Look at that. It's not the normal YouTube channel, so it doesn't have to be pretty, just as long as it has good information. But uh, here is a ring light, which is really good, or box light. Box lights are good for permanent studio setups. Ring lights are good for vlogging and moving it around and taking you places and making it more portable. Um, I'm actually using a ring light to my right here and a soft box light to my left. I just like the combination, the way it looks. But if you're going to be live streaming or podcasting, I've got a different little type of tier list for you. Um, I've put together bundles. So this is the camera, this is the charger, and then the HDMI converter. Because you will need an HDMI converter to plug it into your laptop to run OBS, which is the software you will use to make your live streams and podcasts. Like I said, I'll make a course, separate one on that for podcasting soon. But, um, you know, just different options right here. But all these links, so basically, you know, the Canon M200, this is everything you'll need to buy to make it fully function. So you can't only buy the camera because you're going to need the converter. You're going to need an HDMI cable. You're going to need a tripod. But um, all of this stuff, I mean, the camera is like 500 bucks and it's like 50 bucks for all this extra little crap, you know, a tripod, SD card. So it's the price is mainly just the camera. So go ahead and buy all of those things because you will need it at one point or another. So I'll just give you three options right there for cameras. And then, of course, laptops are extremely important. I went through two laptops, a MacBook, an HP, and I'm on an HP now. Let me tell you, you need a beefy boy. You cannot edit videos on a laptop with anything less than 12 gigabytes of RAM. This right here, the first recommended, is the exact computer I'm using right now to literally power everything. I am powering the microphone. I'm powering the camera, the computer. It's the software switching these angles in real time that you're seeing. I'm not editing that. That's real. Like these, uh, this switch right here, this is a software ran on this computer. So you need a bit of a beefcake, right? Oops, got stuck down. Let's see, finding the right equipment. Um, so I really do not recommend you, you, regardless of what people tell you, you really need a really nice computer for this. This one's about 1500 bucks. I think this is a little bit of a, oh yeah, here we go. 650 absolute minimum. It's going to be kind of a, uh, I like to compare it to, you know, a cheap Honda Civic on the outside with a Ferrari engine, right? That's kind of what this one is. Then this one is a Ferrari on the outside and a Ferrari on the inside. So this is kind of a little bit of a cheap little ricer right here. This is a foreign sports car. And then this is just kind of like a, a foreign sports car that's a little bit more expensive. I don't think MacBooks are better. I, I actually think MacBooks are worse. I've had worse experience on MacBooks. They're name brand, so they are literally double the price for the same specs. I personally do not recommend MacBooks. They're good. You're going to spend twice as much, which when you're running a business, you want to spend the least amount of money and make the most amount of money, right? High profits, low overhead. So I threw it in there only because some people just are Apple fanboys and they have got money to spend. So that's there if you want it. I recommend this one. It's almost half the price and it's the same quality. And I think or same specs, but I think it's actually higher quality. Mine has a face uh, ID reader, a fingerprint reader. It's like 360 turns into an iPad, came with the stylus, 4K screen, it's big. It's got all, all the technology you need. And we're gonna talk about this a little bit later, but this software is called VidIQ, and this basically is your lifeline for making your videos rank. It steals information from other similar channels like that from yours. So if you're uploading a History of Meth video, it actually shows you what the top videos tags are. 
So you can click a video, see its exact tags, steal the highest ranking ones, because not only does it show you what the tags are on every video on YouTube, it ranks them by how powerful they are. So if there's a video, you know, a, a tag 10th down in the line in the video, but it says number one, you know to put that number one on your video. So basically, you know, for that history of meth video, I would go and click on like 10 different highest ranking meth videos, and then I would steal all of the highest ranking tags in those and make a mega tag list, right, for my video. And that's why even though we don't have the best video, I was able to get it to the top. So I'm going to teach you how to do that a little bit later, but this is the software that you're going to need to do that. It's just absolutely hands down. You are going to need it. This is what's going to put, give you the advantage over everybody. You have to have vidIQ. I cannot stress that enough. I would not be, there's hands down no way that legal channel would be as big as it is without it. Then, of course, you're going to want background music and um, uh, free music on YouTube is not safe. If it says royalty free, if it says copyright free, I've had people claim me the next day, claim me before he's even posted and claim me a year down the road. You don't want to have a video go viral. Then as soon as it go viral, the, the holder, some random YouTube musician is like, oh, I want the revenue of that money and decides to claim your song, even though they said, oh, it's royalty free. There's some shady stuff. Epidemic Sound is a monthly subscription service. It's super cheap and it's extremely worth it. You get great music, millions of songs, and uh, sound effects. Everything you need to make music videos, and it's a thousand percent safe. It is super safe. You're never going to get claimed. And uh, I've, I've, I just cannot do free YouTube music now that I'm running a business, now that it's making money. Like I just can't risk that. Here is the editing software. The only software I recommend is Adobe. This is for everything. This is for Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Lightroom for editing photos, and then Photoshop is manipulating photos, uh, Premiere Pro for editing photos, and then um, I think it's called Illustrator for graphic designs, your logos, your merch designs. We're gonna get into all that later, but this is the full package. You can get them individually. You can get Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Lightroom, and Illustrator all individually, but it's actually gonna be more expensive versus if you just get the bundle that gives you everything under the sun, everything Adobe's ever made. I think it's about 50 bucks a month. It's it's absolutely, you have to have it. I mean, there's, there's no getting around it. Um, it does come with a free trial, so you can try them out if you don't like it, whatever but uh, includes everything you need to run a channel. You're going to need all of these, and this is what I personally use, and it's easy because it's just one payment, one specific uh, type of software. It's all works seamless. It's all integrated with each other. It's very easy to use. It's going to streamline your success in content creation and make your life so much easier. Then, of course, I added the notes. Cheaper to subscribe to the all-access package than purchase each individually. So uh, that's it. Next, we're going to go on to the basic channel setup. Okay, so you're just going to want to find any basic photo off of the internet. And I just happen to type in Beach Image HD. And then with that channel art template I was telling you about, you're going to want to drag that on top. And then you're going to want to make this to the appropriate size. And you can Google this or hopefully I'll be able to somehow provide a link to it or a PDF of it. You just want to drag it to the size best you can. So... This is basically going to show you what is the safe area. So up here is the desktop max in the top left, and it goes to tablet, desktop minimum, and then uh, mobile. So I like to optimize it for mobile. Obviously, how are you supposed to make your uh, channel art with this thing in the background? So notice down in my layers in the bottom right corner, I've got this layered on number two. I'm going to go right above it and bring down the opacity so that way I can actually see through it. Right? Okay, so then you're going to click that eyeball right next to it. Down in the bottom right corner, I'm turning off that eyeball. So now, okay, cool. I'm just going to go to filter, you know, add a little bit of blur, add a little motion blur to it. Okay, cool. I like that. Good enough. Now let's add a title. Let's do... Just do my name. Let's just make that. Uh, make it white. Just make it a little bigger. Okay. So now let's see. Okay, so we got plenty of space right here. 
That works. Okay. Perfect. That layer back on top there. So now we know that's going to be on the phone. And maybe let's add a little background and go to the FX tab way down at the bottom. Then you just click drop shadow. For some reason, it's not showing me all of the windows that it's showing you. I don't really got that figured out, but it's not a Photoshop course. We're just mainly just wanted to show you the um, template. Okay, a little background, boom, good enough. So now, when you drop that over it, it's gonna fit. It's gonna be perfectly sized, and then that's the image that you'll upload to YouTube on your desktop. So that's pretty much it. Basically, what I wanted to show you is this just layer template, the channel art template. That's basically what you need to know. Just fit it over there, and then just kind of use it as a reference. Drop the opacity so you can see through it, and then move things accordingly. That's basically how you make channel art. Super simple. Some people have that crazy fancy stuff. I just like to keep it simple. And there you have it. All right, now we are going to get into the basic channel setup. This is where you're going to pick your colors and brand your channel. You're gonna create a simple logo in Photoshop for your channel watermark. You're going to use the template that I provided you, and if I can't fit a place to put it, you simply just type in YouTube channel art template, and I'm gonna show you how to make channel art. Uh, you're gonna use a template to provide cha or create channel art within the correct parameters. You'll also create an eye-catching profile. Don't forget about your page, your uh, about page, because that's very important and full of SEO. Uh, the upload defaults, channel tags, and uh, these are all very important for SEO. I'm just reading from this part. Speaking of SEO, you will need to download vidIQ. That's the software I was talking about in the last segment. So this is very important. This tool will not only show you how well your video ranks amongst others in the same category, it also gives you the highest ranking, highest performing recommended keywords for you to add into your video and channel tags. It's the best way to spy on your competition to see why their videos have become so successful. You can see what tags they use. So uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna show you how it works right now. So here, perfect example. So this is the history of cocaine, right? So let's say, uh, for, for example, this video is one of the ones we used. So if you click on this video, you get this whole new tab here to the right. And you scroll down, once it loads, you get a whole new world of information. So this is vital to setting up your channel, right? So you're gonna want all this information. I don't really care about this stuff, but here, channel tags. This is the very first video that comes up when you type in the history of cocaine. I wanna be first. So I'm going into their tags and looking at what they got. They've got cocaine, drugs, Columbia, crack, coke, on cocaine, cocaine powder, stuff like that. And then they have a very good vidIQ score, which means they check a lot of the boxes. Oh, here, here's the video tags. That was the, uh, what was that? Oh, that's just tags. Okay. So here are the video video tags. Um, looks like these are the, it's the same tags, but this one actually shows you. So cocaine history ranks number eight. So they didn't actually have that many high ticket, uh, high ticket ones here. The channel tags is just that, which is not very good. So here, let's go find another one. Let's find a better example. We'll just use our video as an example. Let it load. So there it is. It says four out of 20 is suggested right here, but got a 75 SEO score. And it goes up whenever, you see like we didn't add chapters in our video, we didn't add that, and we didn't add info cards or captions. So that's why we didn't get 100 out of 100. So then it shows the tags down cocaine history number one see we got we're ranking a lot better we got the channel tags on here so you can even spy on our channel see what we're doing so that's how vidIQ works you basically just do that and you can actually copy all of the tags just by clicking that or it also shows them up here too copy and then you can pick the ones you want to copy and then you can paste them into yours and make them unique and make them into your own so that is the uh, vidIQ tool. 
And all of this stuff, you'll need channel art. I'm gonna show you how to make channel art real quick because it's a little bit tricky. Um, profile picture, I mean, it's pretty basic. Uh, I mean, just a clean profile picture right there. I'll show you my vlog channel. Just, you know, just a random, I just edited that on my phone. Just any random picture. And then here is my finance channel. It's just a picture of me in Hawaii, you know, nothing crazy. The hard part is his channel art up there. So I'll try to do that, but you need to get as, you can get as creative as you want with this. I prefer the basic first name, last name, or if you have a podcast, you may not want to do that. This is totally up to you. You can't go wrong. That is for the name. So I just like the classic first name, last name. If you've got something catchy, go with it. Uh, profile picture. Uh, not just a selfie, make it a little bit more recognizable. Like none of these are just selfies as you can see down there and this, it's not just a selfie, all the colors pop. That's not as much that one, but his face is so big. His face kind of pops. That's nice and blue. And then my main channel, it's got that bright, uh, purple background. So it really pops. So it checks that box. Uh, it's recognizable and I don't like to change it because if people are used to seeing this big purple icon and you switch it, they're not going to know it's you, which is going to throw them for a loop and it's going to hurt your, uh, your click through rate. So then when it comes to the front page, that's just kind of, you know, again, this is up to you. I usually like to format my most popular videos first, then most recent uploads just to kind of show people like, Hey, I'm kind of popular. People like these videos. You should check them out too. And um, then there is featured videos. So if you click on someone's channel, you're going to get one main channel, right? Or one main video on the channel. This is basically the face of it, the history of Pablo Escobar. We put that one there because I'm trying to get that one up in views. And uh, your featured video needs to be your best work because that will be your one chance to convince new incoming people that the channel on your or the content on your channel is worth their time. So this or this uh, video needs to be your best work. It's your one chance to hook them. Then you've got playlists. Very important. Divide your content up into individual categories. This makes it easy for your audience to binge watch as a certain series you've created on your channel makes it easier for fans to watch that series as well. So for example, if they, like the history of, like I showed you, has hundreds of thousands of views, the history of wherever it is, right here, that's the number one playlist. And it just makes it really easy for people to binge watch. So if they like this real, they can just hit play all. It just makes it really easy. Then the about tab, this is full of SEO. Use key, key search terms while giving incoming viewers a brief rundown on what your channel is about and why they should stick around. So let me show you this one on my finance channel. Good profile picture, simple name, good channel art, about tab. So let's see. Welcome to the Grace and Roberts show. That is giving SEO to my name. So when people search up, I'll be a little bit easier. Entrepreneur, giving you guys tips and tricks. So, you know, business tips, business tricks that will rank better. Learning to make YouTube videos and podcasts, flipping furniture taking on clients as a freelancer. So those are some SEO packed words. So that will help rank. We'll go back and the watermark. It's just a simple uh, little add on to your videos. Uh, just makes it look a little bit more professional. So mine kicks in after about five seconds. So after this ad plays, we will skip it and you, you'll see a little watermark in the bottom right corner. It, it could be any just little logo you made in Photoshop or Illustrator. So it's going to pop up in the bottom right anytime now. See, it just makes it look a little bit more professional, right? And you can click on that logo. It's actually interactable. And then you can click that subscribe button. So it's just an extra way for people to subscribe. And that just makes it easier to build a following. Then the upload defaults. These are very important. I like to have a basic message that explains what the channel is about with key search terms. Basically a brief uh, version of the about page. Along with that, add your social media links. I like to add all my affiliate links down there as well. This will save you so much time every time you upload a video. So let me show you the upload uh, defaults on all my channels. Or I'll just show you this one. So that I had a brand deal. 
then there's the title, that's the front line with the hashtag, and then I've got my, this is all default. From here down, this is all default. This happens every single time. So starting at Boss Merch, so boom, every single time I upload, it puts that link. I promote my Discord, promote the channel membership, promote my finance channel, promote my BMX store. And then this just has a little bit of SEO right there, talking about YouTube, clothing line, and all my social media is down there. Then all of these are affiliate links because all the time people leave comments, yo, what gear are you using? What mic, what camera, whatever. So it's all down there. So people can just click it and I get a commission. Then the Grace and Roberts show. Let's go here. I'll show you the upload defaults on this one. So from narco content down, all that is all upload defaults, all that stuff. Hold on. Let me get it from freaking out here. So, you know, merch up top, then I promote my main channel, then I'm promoting vidIQ, then I'm promoting the Adobe link, and then I'm promoting the Epidemic Sound link, and then this is full of a brief summary of who I am, why they should stick around, got some SEO, social media so they can follow me, and then of course, all my affiliate links. And that's all defaults. Obviously, this would take me 10 minutes every single time I upload a video. So, it's much better to just have upload defaults. Then, of course, channel tags, the biggest, best, baddest SEO tags you can find. So there's video tags, and vidIQ is actually going to show you their channel tags. So here's video tags, Grace Roberts number one, Quitting BMX, you know, got some real high SEO stuff in that one. Then it actually will show you uh, recommended ones when you go upload it, but you'll see that when you mess with it. Where does it show channel tags? It shows them somewhere. That's regular tags. Oh, that's what this is. These are channel tags down here. Yeah. So channel tag, BMX, bikes, bikes, biking. I'll give you another example. Showing all my tags right here and down here. Nine valuable business lessons from organized crime, rank number one. Business advice from organized crime, rank number two. Channel tags, entrepreneurship, business, entrepreneur, Grayson Roberts, Grayson, Grayson, finance, hustle, money. So there's that. And you'll want to set those up whenever you do that. You just make sure that you've got high FCO channel tags using vidIQ. Most of this stuff you're going to utilize vidIQ. So channel art. It's simple, but we're going to open up Photoshop. And I'm just going to show you because it took me a while to get the hang of it because it requires certain uh, dimensions. All right, now we are going to talk about a very, very important part of a YouTube channel, of course, and that is coming up with video ideas. Now I'm going to show you a simple little method that I use to recreate viral videos and grow channels faster, make the most amount of money, and of course, maximize your chance of success. But before we get into that, I'm gonna read this straight out of the document here. Coming up with video ideas. I recommend that you sit down and come up with a list of at least 10 to 20 videos prior to filming your first video. Because at some point, you don't wanna get three videos in and then realize or at least think that you don't have any video ideas. You want 10 to 20, now it seems like a lot, and you might sit down for the first hour and come up with nothing, but trust me, this is going to ensure that Anytime you want to film, you'll be able to sit down. You've already got it planned out. You already have the idea. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to waste more time. It that ensures that you aren't going to hit a brick wall 10 videos in and realize you know nothing more about the topic and you cannot make any more videos. So you want to make sure that you're going to have a little bit more uh, bank of video ideas to not only give you ideas, you don't have to waste time coming up with them on the spot every day when you want to film a new one, but to ensure that the channel will have longevity and you won't run into a wall pretty much. So it's kind of a little insurance policy. And then, uh, of course, we just talked about evergreen content. You want that to be uh, evergreen. Example, what to do when getting pulled over. Traffic stops will be around long past our lifetime. Therefore, it's evergreen. Most vlogs are not evergreen. Along with that, you should have a custom series that you invented. Something specific that gets people coming back. Now, for example, I have this series called The Bike Roasts, and this is the title of one of them. Top 10 Worst BMX Bikes of 2020. BMX Bike Roasts. They've been around for years, but nobody has a roast in the BMX niche, let alone a bike roast. I invented it, it helped make my channel kind of what it is, gave it some personality, gave people a reason to subscribe because it's a type of content that they cannot get anywhere else. And um, 
uh, I will say that series where you get fans involved. So like, you know, you say, Hey, DM me on Instagram at Grayson Roberts, a picture of your bike. And I'm going to enter it into the roast series and uh, roast your bike. People come back like crazy fiending to see if their bike made it to see, you know, approval or disapproval from their favorite YouTuber. So people just eat that up. That is an insane hack to boost engagement and have kind of like a weekly safe, you know, this is going to get views. This is going to pay. This is going to consistently grow and build my channel and brand definitely make a series getting the fans involved they absolutely love it i have another one where they send me their bmx videos and i react to their their videos so and then i do have evergreen content on the vlog channel for example how to bar spin that is a um how to it, it, but the bar spin is a trick in bmx that is like basically the dream trick for every kid getting into bmx so it gets thousands of views hundreds of thousands of views i have like six of them they go crazy and that helps bring traffic in, and then the bike roast would keep them there and cause them to subscribe and buy merch and keep coming back. So that's the way to come up with ideas. But let me show you this. Let's go to YouTube right here, and uh, let's say you're probably coming from the Grayson Roberts show. So for example, um, the finance niche. Who is the big man in the finance niche? Graham Stephan. So you want to know what videos do well in the finance niche. Sure. You go to the top 10 YouTubers in that niche. You simply go to their videos, sort by most popular. Okay, so can I recreate this video? How I bought a Tesla for $78 per month? Probably not without ripping it all. Can I, uh, ripping it off? Can I recreate this video? Well, maybe. I've seen multiple interviews of that. Can I recreate this? Probably not. I don't have access to a million, a $10 million invite. But you can recreate this, how to buy your first rental property. You can recreate this, giving your opinion on your luxury car. You can recreate how to teach people about, um, what do you call it, house hacking, how you became a millionaire, how you've done things, how much you make with subscribers, So, or with 1 million subscribers. So I've recreated, boom, how much I make with 40,000 subscribers, how much I make with 8,000 subscribers on that channel. I've made those videos how to uh, buy your first couch flip deal, how to start your channel, how to business things, right? And then he's got all sorts of videos. I've got videos talking about, uh, let's see, what, what else? Let, let's use someone else as an example as well. Let's go to Marco Whiteboard. I love this guy. Let's get some more ideas. And this is pretty much what I do. I come up with some cool, unique ideas that they can't get anywhere else. And of course, do this to help grow that channel. And this channel is brand new. The Grace and Rob channel has 2,000 subs at the time I'm making this course. So I'm in this process right now. You know anything about car dealerships? Look, this guy crushes it off car dealership videos. Car dealership, 7.2 million. How The stock market for beginners, that's great. I might make a video like that. How to manage your money. I've made money managing videos. Let's see. Talking about a side hustle. Side hustle videos do good. I, I've used that idea before with couch flipping. Um, okay, another guy I like. I'm just kind of showing you my process on how I pick out video ideas. I'm not completely ripping them off, and it's not as obvious, but I am taking inspiration, obviously. So, look at this. Second most viewed video, couch flipping. The best side hustle no one talks about. Dude, anybody can couch flip. I have six or seven or eight videos talking about couch flipping. And this is the reason I started this channel. It was because I started couch flipping. And I was like, you know what? I might as well make money while I'm making money. And then I got the video from, idea from him. He's got another killer couch flipping video. And he's talking about taxes, talking about breaking down his income, talking about his first flip talking about car flipping, the whole zero tax Puerto Rico L, uh, 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 tax loophole, talking about LLCs. You can recreate all sorts of stuff like this. Uh, let's do one more. Give one more example. Um, oh, what's his name? I started watching him recently. I really like him. Oh, Nate. Yeah, I like this guy. Oh, I have one more example after this. Trying to go showing you guys my thought process on coming up with viral video ideas. 10 ways to make money as a teenager. I recreated that exact video. Stock market for beginners. Another really well performing video. I have not made that yet, but you bet your bottom dollar I'm going to make that as soon as I'm done recording this course. 
Side jobs, $100 a day. I've made videos like that. Millionaire habits. I've made video, uh, videos like that. Five books that changed my life. I literally have, I think, two of those five books. I've recreated that video. I've already done that. Talking about minimalism, best jobs, no degree. I literally made that video. $500 a week, top side hustles. I made that video. Yeah, I took a lot of ideas from this guy. This guy's great. Three habits that keep you poor. I, I did seven habits that keep you poor. Highest paying jobs. I made that. All sorts of, this guy has, for me personally, some of the best business ideas. Boom, I made that. Some of the best uh, ideas. So what I'm trying to say is find the you know top five, ten people in your niche, right? Make maybe five unique video ideas or a couple series ideas, right? And then the other 15 for your list of 10 to 20, go take you know a couple videos of the top 10 people, recreate those, and that is going to get your wheels spinning much faster. And that's really going to make you explode quicker, maximizing your chance of success versus if you're making a video that you don't even know if anybody's going to watch, if anybody's searching for, if it's a high CPM, go with the proven stuff. And then once you build an audience, then you can kind of create, you know, riskier, like, eh, if they don't right now, you're pretty much going off of the algorithm because you have no fans. So you need to be in the search engine. So that is a great little method, all that stuff. Take that all into consideration when coming up with video ideas. All right, so I will probably come out with a uh, course talking about, you know, how to make good vlogs, how to make podcasts and all that stuff specifically. But in this course, it's mainly just YouTube, not as much content creation. So instead of building a video from scratch, I'm not going to waste your time. I'm going to show you what makes a decent vlog a good enough vlog. And I'm going to show you this is like one of my most recent videos. Absolutely nothing special. It's just, you know, obviously me wandering around looking like a doofus. So let me just show you what this is. So in the document, you will notice there is instructions to make a very specific kind of intro that is going up into the graphics tab like this. If it's going to load, my computer's about a shit of brick. It's doing so many things right now. And we might crash. Not exactly sure the best way to show you this. So here, if you go into this graphics tab right here, you can see a bunch of things on the right hand side. Those are cool little templates to for free, totally for free to help you uh, make intros and outros and cool transitions and stuff like that. So that is what that whole, you know, fancy intro thing is. And I used it to make the intro in this course. I used Epidemic Sound for the music and then I used the graphics template in Adobe to make the cool intro that you see at the beginning of all of these videos. That's why it's really important to have this software because that graphics tab, even though it's going to make my computer shit a brick while I'm recording the studio shot and this screen record shot, uh, it's fantastic. So what I like to do is I like to start with an basic intro. So here's all we're doing here. I've got a little tidbit to show them that, hey, we're at the skate park. It's full of kids. It's half built and I'm doing tricks. It's to get them intrigued. Then there's a little bit of music that you can't hear, but there's music playing. That's what this little green bar is down here that I just selected. The little green bar down there. That's what that is. That's music playing. So it's saying, hey, stick around. Here's a little sneak peek. Nothing too crazy happened in this video. That's why it's kind of boring. And I just throw up the date. You can throw up the title, whatever you want, your logo. And then I do a bit of an intro here. Just kind of catching up because I hadn't uploaded in a while. And I'm, it's kind of a confronting my friend thug video. So we're talking about what kind of happened between us right there. And then I'm going over here. I don't like to usually do so much talking, but, you know, I kind of have an audience. So it's the things I'm saying is pretty important for the video. Usually I like to just get to the chase. So, you know, hit him with an intro and then get to the point. But I had to give a lot of updates. And then I had a, a brand deal right here. Then... I'm introducing my dog, so there's some footage of that, but notice, you know, nice clean footage. I'm not wasting anybody's time. I'm basically giving them valuable points, not blabbing on, and I'm just, you know, here's what's going on, here's the deal with my friend, here's my new dog, and then we're about to get into it. But I went to a brand new skate park, so I wanna show them what it looks like. So after showing them my new dog, then I'm saying, all right, we're here, I'm gonna show you this brand new skate park that just came out, it's half built, 
And then, you know, a little bit of production. I've got, it's a little bit choppy because I've got so many different things recording right now, but some B-roll, you know, add in those little matte bars. To do that effect, you just get what's called an adjustment layer. You go to the effects tab up here in the top bar. You click that, see if it'll let me. And then up in the top right corner, you're just gonna type in crop in that effects search bar, type in crop. I'm trying to do it, but it doesn't want me to move. Little thing here, we'll try like this. Yeah, crop, and then it comes down, and then you drag it onto your clip, just like that. So if we back it up, I just dragged it onto this clip. Then it's right here in this area, right there, and then you can add as much crop as you want. That's just a little fancy thing to spice it up, make your B-roll look a little bit more professional. And then this big pink bar on top is actually another adjustment layer for another effect, and you'll notice it's dragged across the entire video. So, so far we've got our intro, we've got our title, then we're giving quick updates, not wasting anybody's time, giving vital information, Ah, it's got to save again. And then we get to the point, show some B-roll. We've got the crop. We've got music. That's what that green bar is down there. So we're just kind of looking pretty, kind of switch it up. Nice break, nice change of pace from the talking and the information. Just give them something else to do. But this big pink line, this is what's called a LUT. So if you go over into this color tab right here, you drag in another adjustment layer across the whole thing. You go to this color tab, which is going to take a second to load. And then you can go over to this creative tab and then you can download what's called LUTs. And there's a bunch that Adobe comes with. And basically they're fancy professional movie like Instagram filters. And another benefit of Premiere Pro is it gives you all of these for free. I happen to have my own, but you can go in there and you can adjust exactly how it looks. So if I want it more orange like that, as you can see, it's a very professional good So that's like the raw footage. And then I like to usually keep it somewhere around there just to kind of make it look a little bit fancy. And then you, you can manipulate all of the colors. Now you can do this for every single individual clip, but the catch is, is that this adjustment layer, if you just edit the adjustment layer and drag it over all the clips, you only have to do it once. So it's much easier. So we've got the intro, we've got the LUT with the adjustment layer, just to kind of make it look more unique, just make it stand out and kind of brand it to you a little bit more. And then we've got the B-roll here. And then you'll notice there are a million little cuts right here. This is the meat of it. I have a BMX channel and they want to see writing. This is pretty much what they want. So we've got some music, we've got the LUT to make it look good. And then we've got quick cuts. I'll play it a little bit. Doing the trick, doing it, doing it. It'll stop lagging here. Let me get back to the assembly tab. It'll load a little bit better. Then you'll see how quick these cuts are. Let me show you the before and after of the LUT real quick. That's without the LUT. You turn it on and it just makes it look a little bit more orange into you. It looks a little bit more like my channel. I need to stop clicking the save tab. It freezes every time. But as you can see, the LUT makes it look a little bit better. I think a lot better. It makes your videos more recognizable than the first three seconds when they see it. So quick cuts, just doing tricks, you know, kind of zooming in, zooming out every once in a while. You don't want any steady shot for too long. You want to switch it up. You want to constantly switch it up. So I'm zooming in every once in a while. I'm switching scenes. So there's a fail right there. Quick cuts, quick cuts, another fail. I'm not putting in every single attempt because that would get boring. Then boom, finally we've got me landing the trick. Well, almost. Zoomed in, here we go. Change it up a little bit, keep them on their toes. You don't want a static shot. No one likes that. Change the angle, a little zoomed in, go back, and then you can do zooming effects. Like I said, I'll come out with a different course and how-to series on how to really do all these effects and where to get LUTs and all that stuff. But that's the basics of it. You wanna keep it changing, you wanna keep it engaging, switch the scenes, zoom it in, add pictures, add B-roll, just keep them on their toes because that's gonna boost audience retention and the more audience retention you have, the longer they'll stay, the more YouTube will promote it and the more ads they will see and the more money you will make. So a lot of swings, uh, scene switching, we've got some music, some no music, some talking, some no talking. Then just an outro, keep it to a minimum, real short, real short, 
And then I just made a custom little outro, but you can use that graphics tab again. And that's basically everything you need for a basic vlog. Little bit of music, little bit of color, quick transitions, a lot of images and pictures if you're just a steady shot. But other than that, that's everything you really need. You don't need to go too crazy. Don't think that quality is more important than learning how to market it via SEO, title, description, and tags. If you have the best, prettiest looking video in the world, who cares if no one can actually see it, right? So that's kind of my, uh, my thought process on it. So there you go. That's a little bit of a crash course on uh, content creation, streamlining your content creation, and everything you do and don't need to worry about when creating your vlogs or kind of sit down shots like this. All right, so Photoshop is kind of a whole beast in and of itself, and you'll have to go look at YouTube videos on exactly how to do this, but I wanna show you all the elements that make this a very good thumbnail. So, as you'll notice, I am outlined in white. That brings me up from the background. So, if you take that out, you'll notice I am much thinner. So, there's that without it. This is it within it. So whenever you're scrolling, it just makes me pop a little bit more. And this whole picture I edited to be much, much brighter. So if we go down to adjustments, this is kind of how it looked before. I was in a dark room, not a dark room, but that's honestly kind of how it looked before. So I cranked the brightness, made it pop a lot more. And I switched the colors of the words right now. So it does, I did use a solid green, but it made it look kind of like trashy and not as good. And I don't like that solid green as much as I do this kind of pale green because it kind of looks like money. So go back, it looks better. And then I added per day because the per is not that important, but it's a very, very good thumbnail because it's bright. I've got a nice blurred background, which brings me off of the background. Um, I don't know if I can actually unblur this background, but anyway, I blurred the background, which brings me out, outlined myself, which makes me pop. And then I added kind of softer colors, not the classic, you know, harsh greens and stuff like that. I just don't think it looks quite as good. And that's everything you really need. Make sure your, whatever your main focus is, is big, it's bright, it's colorful, it pops off the background, which means like blur the background or do whatever you gotta do, but make sure that it looks good, bright, big. And this is an example of a very good thumbnail. So this thumbnail right out of the gate, this thumbnail for this podcast, this H3 one right here that I'm kind of selecting over and over, that is a great thumbnail. This one, not bad because it's got Joe Rogan, which is his reaction blown up and then a bright picture of the subject blown up into it. The main subject is obviously taking up the entire thumbnail there for Doug's. And then here is my dad's video. Bright purple background, bright white lettering. We've got Pablo Escobar, we've got cocaine, bundles of heroin, money in the background, palm trees, looks good. Um, this is kind of a, not a great thumbnail. It's just kind of a dark picture. It doesn't really catch your eye. It kind of blends in and you wouldn't really uh, see it past everything else. No words, no nothing. And like this, even though it's a movie trailer, the subject is bright. He takes up most of it. It says trailer and the background is blurred. This is just kind of a normal, regular picture. This is a very good thumbnail. Uh, obviously, once again, this podcast right here, great, big, giant, awesome, bright, vivid thumbnail. And then this right here, regardless of the few differences, this is a very cool video. I'm sure it's popped up in your recommendations as well. But in terms of a thumbnail, not a great one. You know, Logan Paul obviously is a master of YouTube. Uh, Mr. Beast is a master of YouTube. So just go on their channel and look at the types of thumbnails that they get. Mr. Beast is a great person to look at because all of his thumbnails are colorful. They are bright. The subject is in it. The background that's not important is blurred. And just note the key components. His face, real big. They're recognizable. You know exactly who he is and he uses bright colors. Very, very consistent, very recognizable. When you see a Mr. Beast video without the title or even the channel name, you know it's a Mr. Beast video. So that is uh, kind of the crash course on thumbnails. Hello everybody, this is a quick disclaimer letting you know that the script writing video is free for everybody on YouTube and I know you did pay for this course, however, um, everything else in the course besides this section and the, uh, what is it, the faceless YouTube section. However, once I made these videos, I was like, you know, these are really valuable, I obviously should add them into the YouTube course regardless of 
they're already on YouTube or not, so you guys get the most valuable information. Now, everything else uh, is definitely unique content to this course, so don't worry, you're not getting ripped off, but these two sections are free for everybody, and I just wanted to make that a disclaimer so you guys are not surprised if you see these videos free for everybody on YouTube. It's just these two sections. Anyway, uh, here is the section about how to write a script for your YouTube channels, whether it's yours or a faceless channel or whatever it might be, in just minutes. It used to take me hours to put together a really good, well-researched script, and now I can put together a script in 10 minutes or less. Now, if you are a YouTuber, if you write scripts for TV, if you write scripts for other content creators, whatever, if you need, well, essentially, you could apply this to research papers for school. I'm gonna show you how you can create high quality, customized, obviously unique scripts in just a few minutes. I am gonna show you just kind of an example of how I use it to now write my scripts much faster. So we're gonna go in here. This is a blog that I actually wrote. This was the example of, that I was using in the last video about how to use it to write a blog. So we are going to write a script. So we're gonna click new post and it doesn't really matter because this is more keywords that is going to help structure your blog post. But you know, we're gonna talk about uh, housing market predictions. I've already got that written down in here. So we're gonna continue. They're letting you know that their AI software will be able to do a good job. So let's do a housing market, housing market crash. When is the housing market predicted to crash? How to predict house? So basically things that are just kind of relevant to whatever you're talking about. Now this is more structured towards blogs and optimizing and it doesn't really matter uh, for script writing. So first, you know, we get, just give it a title, might as well. It's gonna help you structure the script. So let's go ahead and do, let's see. Enter title here, housing market news. So then we'll generate a title. Like I said, the title doesn't really matter all that much. So let's do housing market forecast for 2015. So clearly that was a trending title and that worked then. So why won't it work now? But like I said, that doesn't really matter too much. Now I'm briefly gonna cover some of the features of this just because it's important and you might want to use it. However, I covered it in more detail because this is more helpful for the blog posts and the other videos. So, you know, you can go to outline and it's going to read the tags that you gave it. And it's going to read your title and it's going to generate outlines. So as you can see here, it's going to give you a well-worded introduction. It's going to give you step one, the housing market in 2022, what experts say, it's just kind of give you an outline. And it's going to tell you what causes crash, how it will affect the average person, what you can do to prepare for it in a conclusion. Like it just generated this outline for you and you just have to fill in the blanks, which is absolutely insane. However, it will also write for you. So let's say predicting the housing market can be tough. However, here are some tips to navigate a real estate crash. I don't know, something random. I'm just gonna briefly show you this and you click that, it's the AI write more button and it's gonna tell you how to navigate a real estate crash. It's absolutely insane. Stay up to date on all the latest news and trends, be prepared to act quickly. Like this is so powerful for writing unique blog posts. However, you can use that to, for scripts, but usually whenever you're writing a script, you know, you could be writing it about something that you don't know about or for a client on information that you're not, you know, an expert in. So you have to source your information from somewhere else. So now let's, let's just come up with something random for uh, a video. Let's talk about um, what is cryptocurrency? I don't know, something random that you're writing a script for. Looks like I spelled that wrong. Oh, I spelled that way wrong. Oh, well. And let's just click a random website that you're gonna source your information from if you're writing this script. So used to, I would look at it and I would take this information, put it onto a Google doc and just try to think and spend a lot of time on how to reword it. I didn't wanna copy it too much in a way that, you know, it would be easily understandable for the average audience member. So watch this. Cryptocurrency is sometimes called cryptocurrency or crypto is any form of currency, blah, blah, blah. So, okay, this is good information. I wanna use this for my script. However, obviously you can't just steal that, right? You have to reword it. So this is where it gets powerful. You can hit the rephrase section right here and it's gonna rephrase it for you. Cryptocurrency is a type of currency that is digital or virtual and uses cryptography to secure transactions. So boom, you literally just took that paragraph, reworded it and you're good to go. Now let's do it again. Take this, paste it into there. 
highlight it. Now it looks like this is too many words for it to handle at one time. Highlighted 30 to 400 characters. Okay, that's easy. All we're gonna do is just cut it right there. Rephrase this and see what it says. Cryptocurrency is a way to pay for things online without using a bank. It is a system where people can send and receive payments from each other without a middleman. Look, this is great stuff. It's just literally taking the exact same information, rewording it, and you can see how quickly I'm creating a script. So I'm taking the information that, you know, if you're writing a script for someone else, you probably really don't know what they're talking about. And you want to source the information, of course. So you just copy, paste, rephrase. It's that easy to create scripts for YouTube channels. And that's basically it, folks. This is the new website, brainwork.com, linked in the description if you'd like to check it out, not sponsored, that I have been using to help me write blog posts. There's also a video more specifically geared towards blogs if you'd like to check that out. But most importantly, all this finance news, you know, it's a lot of complicated stuff, even though I know about it, it's easier just to go to a website where someone has already done the wording and the and the organizing and done all the really the heavy lifting. I copy and paste it over into my uh, brain work and I rephrase everything and then I use that for a video, right? It makes so much more sense. I can pump out way more quality content. It just improves workflow and like I said, I can get a lot more done using brain work than I could previously, right? So I'm making more money by pumping out more high quality video. All right, finally, we're gonna start talking about the money, the whole reason you're here. But the whole thing is, is like, yes, we do YouTube for the money, we do YouTube because it's fun, but there's a lot of moving parts. But finally, we're gonna start talking about the money. Now, we're gonna get into the monetization requirements and things to avoid demonetization because that can be a problem. Now, I just wanna say right off the bat, the green dollar sign means you're good to go. The yellow dollar sign means that it is limited or no ads, which means you're really gonna make hardly any money at all. The kind of grayed out dollar sign with the line through it means it's just not being monetized simply. And then the red dollar sign with the line through it means that you're ineligible and you are a banned from making money on that video or any advertisers being displayed. So obviously you want the green one. We're gonna talk about how to keep it there. But if you do get a uh, yellow one, that means that you have been marked for not suitable for advertisers. Hopefully you're not gonna have any trouble with copyright because Epidemic Sound was gonna keep you clean and out of the trouble and you're never gonna worry about that. So we're really only gonna talk about being flagged for inappropriate, dangerous, and all the things we're gonna talk about. But if you do get that real quick, I just wanna say you can hover above that yellow icon and hit request appeal. Now, sometimes you're actually going to win that appeal. About 85% of the time, I click that button on the legal channel because we get it every single time we upload. We get deemed with the yellow. We just keep it on private. We let it up 24 hours on private. We appeal it and 85% of the time they give it to us because our content is clean, but there is drugs in the thumbnail title and the video, but we got to show that it's educational and we're not actually like, you know, using it for entertainment or bad purposes. So you can appeal them and you can, of course, win them. And sometimes we've lost them when we shouldn't have. So what I did is I re-uploaded the video, deleted the first one, got dinged, requested it, and fixed the problem. So just keep re-uploading it. If you really didn't do any of these things I'm about to tell you, just keep re-uploading, keep re-appealing, and eventually someone's gonna be like, all right, this guy's fine. It just depends on who you get at YouTube. So what you need to join the partner program, the YouTube partner program is the AdSense program, how you make money with AdSense specifically. You're going to need 4,000 watch hours in 12 months, and 1,000 subscribers in 12 months. Now notice that we got 3,000 subscribers in the past 28 days, past one month, and 22,000 watch hours in the past one month on a channel with only 8,000 subscribers. So it's very possible, but here's what I'm gonna tell you about this. To get 4,000 watch hours is going to require about 1,000 subscribers and vice versa. So what I'm trying to say is, they go hand in hand. If you have 4,000 watch hours, you've probably got around 800 to 1,200 subscribers. You know, they just, they just kind of go hand in hand, um, but uh, they do both of the requirements. That way you can't just, you know, pump and dump, you know, shout them out on another channel, shoot up to 1,000 subscribers and you're in. You've got to prove to YouTube you're worth it by having watch hours as well as subscribers. And if you have a video that goes viral, but no one's subscribing, then you've got kind of not good content and they're not going to want to pay you for that, right? So that's the way it is, but it's, pretty easy to get, but I will say it took just under 12 months, just under one year. So it was, as we saw in the 
uh, examples here. Maybe I'll maybe I should just pull it up again. I, I I should probably just pull it up again and show you what I mean, so I, you can get a realistic expectation of what to expect. You should actually, in theory, do it faster than I did. And the reason for that is is I didn't know everything the first time. Now I know everything that there is to know about making a YouTube uh, become successful, a YouTube channel. So hold on, let me flip the analytics. But you're watching this course, so if you're watching this before you even start a channel, you are 10 times ahead even I was. So let's go into the past, let's go into lifetime. So I should, you saw these earlier in the course, but this is where we started in March. He's had a channel for this long, but we started pretty much here. So as you can see, nothing. Literal flatline. Literal flatline. And then right at the one year mark, boom, we took off. And then we pretty much got all our requirements here. So what I'm trying to say is it will take a while. It is going to take almost a year or six months or three months, but you're not going to move for the longest time. You're just simply not going to make it anywhere. You're going to be flatlined. You're going to get zero views, maybe 10 views a video for the first four months. Then that fifth month, that sixth month, that 12th month, it could take off at any time. So you need to keep with it. I wish it would show me the actual numbers. Yeah, here we go. There we go. So we went from, let's see, March 18th, we went 273 views in a day. That was about 100 videos uploaded, so only getting that to, let's go, April 18th, we got 4,000. So we went from 250 views in a day in one month time we were up to, oh, I kicked the camera. We were up to 4,000 views in a day. Isn't that crazy? So let's turn that into monies. So let's see, where is that March 18th? Hold on, we're just going to go to the 2020 here. But I'm just trying to, uh, oops, 2021. Trying to inspire confidence, you guys, and kind of get it in your head the right way to think about it. So let's go, what was it, March 18th? So we made $3 March 18th. And then simply one month later, that three dollars, let's see, it was twenty-five dollars. Then one month from that, May 18th, that like what, 30 bucks was 46, but I mean, of course, we had over a hundred dollars. But what I'm trying to say is it'll take off any time. Just keep going. I just wanted to kind of make that clear here for a second. So we're on the same page there. But um, they, it, it is difficult to achieve, but just give it time. So I'm going to redirect you here to the document so you can see as I talk about it, things to avoid demonetization. I'm just going to leave them on the screen here. Controversial topics. If there is something going on in the news, like for example, me and my dad did daily uploads on the George Floyd trial with or the Derek Chauvin trial in the case with George Floyd, and it was very controversial. We got dinged yellow monetization every time. We appealed it. It ended up working out, but things like that can be sketchy. Political things, hot political topics. There was a time where they were uh, replacing someone in like the Senate or somewhere in the government, and we talked about it, and we got dinged. Even though it was totally clean, nothing should be uh, wrong with it. They dinged it because it's controversial and it's political. So avoid those topics. Firearms. YouTube does not like guns. Now, I have a gun in the outro of every single video on the Grace and Roberts channel. I have videos on my main vlog channel where we just shoot guns at random things. I shoot guns all the time on YouTube. So it can be a little bit weird, but my one of my favorite channels called Demolition Rants is a gun channel. And... Most of his channel is demonetized, he says, because they do not like firearms. They think they're dangerous. And of course, the sale of firearms. They will not have you advertising anybody selling firearms, I guess. But um, you can put it on YouTube, but you might get demonetized. So if you're a gun nut, I might not make a YouTube channel about it unless you're going to uh, plan on being demonetized. Violent or dangerous content. I've made, uh, back in the day, I've made, you know, kind of compilation type channels where I'd basically download other people's videos and chop them up and make compilations. Um, I've been dinged for, you know, making fight compilations, fail compilations, graphic content, stuff like that. So violent or dangerous content will get you dinged. But usually that is a, uh, you can be striked for that. Not a copyright strike. Uh, what is it called? Uh, blocked. You can be blocked for that, for not abiding by their community guidelines. Of course, spammy slash scammy content, promoting any scams, you know, brand deal scams. 
Uh, nudity, I've shown butts on my channel many times before. I've never showed boobs or anything like that. Um, I think, have I showed, no, I haven't showed any dicks or anything. I've showed balls, but very minimal, like, you know, keep, just keep it out of the, there's no reason. I'm, it was when I was younger, but luckily I never had any problems. But uh, yeah, be careful with the sensitive content. Hate speech, obviously, that goes against their community guidelines. So not only are you going to be demonetized, but you will be blocked. And here is the big one, cussing in the first 30 seconds. So you should try your best to keep it to a minimum. But the weird thing about YouTube is, is I drop F-bombs all the time on my main vlog channel. But if you say it in the first 30 seconds, just kind of come out of the gate swinging, they do not like that at all, and they will demonetize you. So keep it squeaky clean. If you do cuss, bleep it out. Squeaky clean in the first 30 seconds, and then it's kind of fair game. Keep it to a minimum. Do not say really harsh words like the C word or the N word. Those will get you demonetized no matter what time you put them in. But I have noticed that not cussing as much in my videos has led to more brand deals, actually. So even though it hasn't affected my CPM, uh, it if affected the amount of brands that wanted to work with me. So something to take into consideration. All right, so moving on to other sources of income because it might take you 12 years like it did for me, not 12 years, good Lord, uh, 12 months like it did me to get that legal channel monetized. So you might wanna make money in the meantime, or maybe you've already monetized and you wanna quadruple your income because to be honest, even though AdSense can pay well in a high CPM, it's actually probably the least amount of money you're going to make as a YouTuber. Obviously, my YouTube channel with 41,000, the uh, vlog channel makes few hundred dollars a month in AdSense, but a lot more on these other sources of income. So I'm going to review or refer to the document here and show you what it is. The first one is merchandise. It's very obvious. It's, it's obviously, you know, everybody does merchandise, but this is a way to do it without going to the post office, without leaving your house, without having any inventory and without having to buy $500 for only 50 t-shirts. It's called print on demand. Now I have an entire YouTube video teaching you how to do it using Printful. Basically how it works is here is Printful. And uh, so, so you're gonna, here, let me go back to the document here. Let's see if it, yeah, there, there's the video right there. And I, I'm gonna explain it all there, but um, you're gonna be using Shopify to host your store. And essentially you're going to be drop shipping, but it's not like what you will think. So, and then you're gonna download Printful within Shopify, which is an app. And that is how you are going to do it. So it's fully explained in that link right there in the document. So check that out. But basically, so here is Shopify and Printful. Basically, it's the same thing. Shopify is the store host, your website. And then Printful is the app that basically builds out your website, right? And that's the manufacturer for these clothes. So someone, so, okay. So here's your store right here. Here is a boss, my store. And then you are the customer. You order from my store, right? So customer order from boss. Well, that goes straight down to Printful. Printful designs, fulfills, prints as you place the order or as they place the order, then Printful ships it directly to your customer after they've printed, fulfilled it, branded it, put your logo on their box and receipt. So basically it's drop shipping, but it only takes about a week to arrive. So it's not like using AliExpress. You don't have to go to the post office. You only pay when you're paid, right? So if Jimbo gives me $20 for a t-shirt, I give Printful $5 to make that t-shirt and ship it to Jimbo for me. So that's basically how that works. It's fully explained, but you'll need Shopify, which is $30 a month after the free trial, which is nothing. You'll make $30 a sale with Printful, right? So, and then you'll want a domain, which is going to be about $10 because you don't want that stupid dot my Shopify store. And I explained this whole thing in that video. This is not a uh, drop shipping clothing brand course. So that's why we're going brief over this, but I am mentioning the best way to sell merch with the least amount of time and money. And Printful, of course, Printful is free. Printful takes nothing. You're using them as your shirt manufacturers and that's how they make their money. So, all right. Then you can get Printful for free right here. It's absolutely free. You don't even really need Shopify. Shopify is just a place for Printful to live. You can use Wix. You can use anything. Hey, she's trying to pee. Will you go take her out? Sorry, my dog is uh, trying to pee. You're going to have to be quick. Thanks. You're not taking the leash? Oh, fuck. Anyway, 
but you can use directly from Printful to, you know, promote links, but it's easier if you have something, you know, it's easier if you have a website with all your Printful products, but you don't have to, I guess. Anyway, next is affiliate marketing. So my favorite one is the Amazon affiliate program. Basically it's called Amazon associates and you sign up for it and then you can sell any product on Amazon, absolutely any product on Amazon and you will get a commission. So you will get this bar at the very top. You might notice it says Amazon Stripes Associate. So if you have a YouTube channel, let's say tech unboxing and you buy the new iPhone 12 and you review an iPhone 12, you can click it right here. This is the product that you want to put in the link in the description, right? Instead of using this link to refer your customers and making absolutely no money, you will go up and you will click this link, get text link. You will copy that link, put it in the description, and that link is custom to you. So you will get a percentage. So if you get 10% of a thousand dollar phone, you're gonna make a hundred dollars per sale. That's pretty good. And that is my favorite. So, uh, and the cool thing about Amazon is, is if you're promoting cheap products, like, you know, uh, uh, maybe a, a cup, this cup cost me about a dollar. I'm gonna have to shut my door. They're doing maintenance outside. This cost me about a dollar, but if you click the link to go get this cup, then you don't buy the cup, but then you buy an iPhone, you get the credit for the iPhone. Anything they buy in the next like couple days or something like that, in the next few hours, couple days, I'm not exactly sure, but um, you will get commission on anything they buy. So if they go through your link, buy a hundred iPhones, and you, you make the commission from the hundred iPhones, even if it's not the direct product linked to that link. So Amazon Associates is a fantastic way for tech review channels or even, you know, I use affiliate marketing all the time for, you know, I'll make videos talking about YouTube. It's like, here's the camera, here's the mic, here's everything you need. But if you're not much into that, here is ClickBank. So if you're an educational channel, ClickBank is basically e-products, e-commerce, not e-commerce, uh, what do you call it? courses, like online classes. So that's kind of online stuff. Share a sale, that's kind of a marketplace for affiliate marketing that has a bunch of different programs within it. And then uh, Printful has it. So if you're talking about starting a clothing brand, just like this, this is a Printful affiliate link. I will get commission every single time one of you makes a sale, even though it's not gonna come out of your pocket, it doesn't cost you any money, it's absolutely free, it does nothing but put money in your pocket, they'll still pay me. So there is just some of my favorite affiliate marketing products or programs. And then of course, brand deals. Now I do want to say that uh, these are great platforms, you know, Grapevine, Shoutcart, MakerWatch, or simply cold emailing companies you want to work with. All of these are all great platforms. Hands down, the best deals are always when a brand finds your business email on the about tab of your channel and reaches out themselves. So let me show you an example of that. So we're already on Nate's channel, so we're, let's just use this. We'll go to the about page and he's going to have a for business inquiries view email address. Boom, there you go. That's how brands will find you. So make sure you have that set up. And then just be patient. Usually when you hit your about first 10K, you should start getting emails. Do not take every offer that comes your way. Make sure you know your worth and promote products you believe in. You can use this service called Kelly Blue Book. They will analyze your channel and tell you how much you should charge. Um, I, it's how I use to figure out my brand deals. I don't have an affiliate link. Um, actually I'm probably going to put one, uh, I'll put one under the brand deals tab. I'll put the, the Kelly blue book affiliate link for you guys. Not Kelly blue book, a social blue book. Kelly blue books for cars. Social blue books is for social media. So if you have 10,000 subs and you get 5,000 views and upload, you don't know how much to charge for brand deals give them your channel and they're going to calculate it and tell you for you. And it's very accurate. And that's what I used. So those are other ways to make money outside of AdSense. And I'm going to pause this right now, go to the next section and find the uh, social blue book affiliate link for you guys. So what everybody wants to know, what is the viral video formula? It is simply watch time plus engagement equals views. And views is obviously the currency that you're going for. So let's go straight out of the document here. The viral content formula. Watch time plus engagement equals views. So watch time is how long people watch your videos. 
Engagement is if people actually like it. Are they hitting that like button? Are they leaving a comment? Are they subscribing? Because if a, you know, a bunch of people watch your video but they don't interact with it, it shows YouTube that they don't really care. So if you get a lot of people to watch your whole video and engage with it in every way possible, they are going to promote it, blowing your video up, making you money, and uh, bringing you success. So all of these things we're going to talk about in this next segment are vital to receiving watch time and engagement. So you need watch time, you need engagement, and you're gonna need all of these things for the both of them. First of all is the thumbnail. Now we talked about this in the basics of the content creation in that segment of the course, um, but we're just gonna kind of go over some brief points here. But you're gonna want a clean, high quality image. Avoid annoying thumbnails with too many words or arrows and never use emojis, so they're just really cringy. You gotta make them recognizable like Mr. Beast does. All of your thumbnails need to be on brand and consistent, just like Mr. Beast. Like I said in that segment, you could see a Mr. Beast thumbnail and without even seeing the title, without even seeing the channel name, you know it's him. Your audience should be able to pick your channel out in a sea of videos just by the fonts, colors, and style of your editing. Therefore, they can quickly select you over any other competition on any other certain video topic. So like with the narco content and my dad's channel making those history of drug videos, we like to make all of those thumbnails very recognizable and very consistent. So when someone types in the history of heroin, they immediately click on his videos and not anybody else's and it works. Next up, you need a 50-50 SEO score with uh, vidIQ. We're going to talk about a little bit later in this course how to master SEO, but basically you need to optimize your title. For example, here is a great title with heavily searched terms. I tried couch flipping as a side hustle tips for beginners. So this is a fantastic example of a packed, packed title. Of course, your description and utilize hashtag hashtags. YouTube allows you to use up to three hashtags, so use them wisely, and there's just a little bonus to rank in the search engine. And then, of course, your tags. You want to optimize your tags, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later with vidIQ, so we're going to leave that at that, but it is a very vital part of getting watch time. Now, here is how you can boost your engagements. You can encourage comments, likes, and subscriptions. That's called a call to action. If you simply ask your audience to do one of those things or all of those things, they're way more likely, statistically proven, way more likely to actually do them versus if you didn't even mention it to them at all. It's not that they don't wanna subscribe. It's not that they don't wanna like your video. They just might simply not think about it. And you can also utilize giveaways to get your audience to do what you want. For example, you can say something along the lines of, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and send this video to three friends to enter my $50 Amazon gift card giveaway. Then they're going to like and subscribe and share the video with three friends because they do nothing but get the chance of winning money. They have all the reason in the world to do whatever you say. Then you can have them comment what you will buy or what they will buy with their $50. So not only are you getting a like and subscribe, but you're getting a wildfire sharing of your video because they're sharing with three friends and three is gonna share with three more and then three, you know, six, nine. You're just gonna keep multiplying. So, cause you know, three will turn to six, six will turn to 12, 12 will turn to 24. So that kind of theory. Um, And then of course you're going to uh, get a bunch of comments which will just boost your engagement. High watch time, we talked about this in the content creation as well, but switch up the scenes to keep people visually engaged. Try to incorporate comedic jokes throughout your videos, no matter your niche. All my niches, The Grace and Roberts Show, which is finance, Grace and Roberts, which is BMX vlog, and Joshua Roberts, which is the legal channel. We try to use comedy because it gives people more than one reason to watch your videos. We call this concept infotainment. So we basically you know, give them a good information and give them a good laugh. So they're getting two birds stoned at once. You're getting a good laugh and you're being entertained. All right, let's talk about the power of audience retention and engagement. 
the longer people watch your videos, the more you earn and the more YouTube will promote your videos because that means the more YouTube earns. YouTube wants users to stick around on their platform for as long as possible. So if you can get them to do that, they're going to promote your video. If you have a 15 minute video and your average audience retention is 70 to 80%, that's pretty good. So I'm going to give you some tips on boosting that. Don't ramble. Get to the point. You have about 30 seconds at the beginning of your video to convince your viewers your content is worth their time. So start with a hook. People hate mindless talking and you will lose them fast. So in the uh, example of the content creation section we had earlier in this course, we talked about how you have an intro, right? It's an eye catching. It's quick. It's to the point. Then you get to the vital information. If you have to intro what you're doing, keep it really quick, 10 seconds or less, preferably then get into the meat of the content. And then you're going to want to switch angles from there, either add pictures, add videos, add music, add special effects, you know, zoom in, zoom out, do whatever you got to keep your audience visually engaged. So convince them that they're going to watch the whole video in the first 30 seconds and then keep them there with using the uh, switching it up that we're going to talk about next, which I pretty much just gave away. But change up the scenes. Nobody wants a boring background for 10 minutes. You are, if you are a vlogger, switch the studio, switch the shot up every two to three minutes if possible. We pretty much talked about that. Keep them on their toes. You're going to add in graphics and pop-ups, pretty much everything we just said to make it a lot more fun and visually engaging to watch, causing them to stick around longer. And then, of course, the comedy theory we talked about, giving them a reason to stay or giving them a reason to come for more than just the information called infotainment, that theory and then action packed. So let's say you're not a vlogger and you have a boring topic or you have a boring studio shot, kind of like I have with the Grays and Roberts show. You want to add in as much value as possible or as much entertainment as possible, depending on your niche. But you want to make your audience feel like if they click off your video, they will miss vital key information or an essential part of the story you are telling. Keep them on the line. So then I have this uh, little theory in here. It's called the straight line theory. I learned it from a book uh, called The Way of the Wolf by Jordan Belfort. He's the Wolf of Wall Street guy. But imagine your audience is on a straight line. The more that your audience strays from that line, the more you're losing them. So you've got a line, and then the more they stray from it, the more you, quicker you're going to lose them. So, you know, first 30 seconds, two minutes, three minutes, and then eventually they click off and go somewhere else. You want to keep them on this line as long as possible. So think about it like that when you're editing and structuring your videos. The farther they stray away from that line, the quicker they will click out of the video. Your goal is to keep them as straight on that line as humanly possible using all of the tactics we just mentioned. All right, now we are going to discuss some engagement hacks, which is, you know, watch time plus engagement equals views. That is the viral video format, and this is the engagement section of that. So we mentioned it briefly, but we're going to create its own section here. So you're going to want to encourage your audience to give you a like if they gain value or like the subject you are talking about or filming. For example, on the Grayson Roberts show, I always say this. Make me a deal. If you guys gain any value at today's video or even you crack a smile, hit that like button. If not, feel free to hit that dislike button. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I burped so much making this damn course. Hey, they're, they're, they're paying for it. Fuck it. They, they want the good stuff. Anyway, but that works every time. You know, you just say, make me a deal. If you guys gain any value out of today's video, hit that like button or if you even crack a smile. If not, hit that dislike button and move on with your day. I appreciate your view either way. It always works, and if they do dislike it, that's still engagement, and negative engagement, hate comments, dislikes, that's still engagement, so uh, don't worry about that. And the subscribe. Don't just tell them to subscribe, give them a reason to subscribe. Explain to them the unique value your channel brings and why they cannot get that anywhere else. For example, I might say, subscribe to The Grace and Robert Show, which is my finance channel, because I am not the richest YouTuber on YouTube talking about this. I'm not Grand Stefan. I don't have Graham Stefan money. I'm not Ryan Panetta. I'm not, I don't have Ryan Panetta money. I'm Grace and Roberts. 
I am, you know, every everyday guy teaching you how to do everyday guy things, you know, starting a YouTube channel with this course, how to flip couches, which is what anybody with a truck can do, right? So kind of basic everyday things. So when I tell people to subscribe, I give them a reason, not just simply say subscribe because that's what everybody says. So with the comments, ask them a question. This works like a charm. They will likely leave a comment with their suggestion slash opinion. They eat that stuff up. And the more comments you get, boost engagements, which boosts views. So tell them that you read the comments and I encourage that you like and heart the comments because if your fans are replying or commenting on your videos and they say, oh, he liked his comment and he loved his comment, maybe he'll love mine, which will encourage them furthermore to leave comments. So tell them you read the comments, then go through and like, love and reply to as many as possible. When you are first starting a channel, you need to treat your viewers like your best friend, engage with them, You need all the love you can get. Keep them coming back. Build a little family, a little community. And you can say things like, let's see, um, uh, let's say this was a YouTube video. Be like, let me know down below your personal engagement hacks. If you don't have any, let me know what your engagement hack favorite was from this video. And then you're going to get every category of people, whether they have a hack or don't have a hack, commenting on your video, exploding it pretty much, giving you all the, uh, all the, engagement that you want. Okay, so this is one of the absolute hands down most important parts of this entire course, which is SEO. And this is essentially how you are going to get views. This is how you are going to get your video to the from the hundredth place in the search term to number one. And for example, I will show you how that works. So here is how you get successful on YouTube. So let's open a new YouTube tab here and let's type in the history of meth. Now there are tons of videos with millions of views, but you type it in and guess who's number one? Us. We are number one. There is Vice right here with 1.4 million views, 14.4 million subscribers. They have a much better video, much bigger subscriber base, and much more views. Same down here. 5.4. 12 million subscribers, 120,000 views. We're just some random channel with, at this point in time, this was a year ago, we had no pop-ups. It was just him sitting there talking about the history of meth. That's what our content was back when we first started and literally got 121,000 and made $1,500 in the past year and still brings in about 1,000 views a day, which is really good, which is about 10 bucks a day alone on this specific video. So, and of course we have like over a hundred videos. So that is what you want to be able to do. And we are trying to monopolize this narco content. So do the history of heroin. We are also number one. We're trying to get all of the drugs. We want to be the people that they go to. So history of cocaine, we are second. So that is essentially what we are going to learn to do. So you want to use vidIQ for this. And in the document, I don't have it pulled up right now, but in the document, there are examples on perfect titles, perfect tags, perfect descriptions, perfect examples. But we are actually going to upload a video from scratch showing you exactly how I utilize my secret methods to rank my videos all the way to the top. This is probably the one thing in this course I am most reluctant to tell people about because it's the one thing that is going to separate you failing from you succeeding. So... Here we go. The document will pretty much show you everything that you need to know in greater detail, but the video portion of this specific area is going to be talking about, uh, I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna do it from scratch. And vidIQ is what you'll need. Go to the software, the like what you'll need, the uh, right equipment uh, section. Of course, there's a leaf blower outside again. I need to close my back door, but so we are going to do that right now. And basically vidIQ is gonna show you exactly what tags your competitors used to get there. And I've talked about this before, you know, you click 10 of the highest performing videos in the meth categories and click the highest performing tags out of each video using vidIQ and then make a mega tag list for your channel. And that's how we boost it to the top. So let me show you. We're going to upload a video on my finance channel. Let me take care of that. So we're going to upload completely from scratch utilizing vidIQ. Okay, so vidIQ doesn't really work in this window. So let me here. I don't want you guys seeing my documents just in case. Um, actually, I don't really care. We'll do this. Can you, oh, you can't even see this window anyway. Okay. So I'm looking for, we're going to do how to couch flip. 
So you're going to throw your video in there. And I like to just skip through this tab as quick as possible because VidIQ doesn't work on this tab. So, okay, on. I'm not filling anything out yet. We're skipping through this tab. We don't want this tab. And hopefully you can click none of the above. Submit rating. Okay, got to get through this. But yeah, you essentially just want to skip through all of this. Okay. Don't do anything. Just skip through it all. It's a little bit easier whenever you get to the, uh, the other screen to upload. So our category is how to flip. That is our video. So we are going to go how to couch flip. And we're going to figure out what the best search terms are. I tried couch flipping for 30 days. How to make money couch flipping. Just couch flipping. So obviously that has to be in the title. Couch flipping guide. How. So it looks like. That leaf blower is busting out there. Okay. Flipping couches. I tried couch flipping. Okay. So I think the title that we're going to do. This is the best video. So we're going to click on it. And then using vidIQ, you can see over here in the right, you get that whole window. And we've talked about this earlier, but here are the video tags. These are everything he used, but I don't like his video tags because his number one is real estate. So he kind of just had some dumb luck with this one, I noticed. So I think for the title, we're going to do, let's just do, uh, I'm going to let it load. You go back into it, and this is where everything happens. So we're going to do how to, let's go how to couch flip. Now let's do all caps here. Couch flip. Beginner's guide. So that is a pretty good one. And what you're going to want to look at is vidIQ down here. So here is your vidIQ SEO score. That is what you want to get 50 out of 50. That is very important. That means you have maximized your SEO. So with the description, actually, we're going to do that last because I'm going to show you how that actually changes the SEO. So thumbnail, we'll pull up a thumbnail here. You can't see this window for some reason, but I'm going to put a thumbnail... I don't guess it really matters. We'll just use that for now. And then playlist. Of course, you want to add it to a playlist. So I like to do this one in the couch flipping playlist. Um, yeah, I guess I'll put it there since I'm just going to delete this right after. So now the tags. So let's go back here. Let's try this video. Okay, so he's got Amazon FBA, so... Okay, couch flipping tips, that's number three. Couch flipping business is number two. Couch flipping Ryan, side hustles. Okay, so I've got kind of an idea of what this guy has here. Let's go to the... Yeah, he's got a pretty good SEO score here. He's got a 84 out of 100, so I trust these tags. These are pretty good. So I think we're going to take number two here, couch flipping business. So we're going to start with, we'll just start with couch flipping. Couch flipping. Ooh, that has a score of 70 out of 100. Flipping business. Okay, then we're going to do side hustle. Couch flipping side hustle. All right. So I'm going to do couch. We really want to emphasize that couch flipping. How to couch flip. Anything that people might be searching. So let's check our vid IQ. So we're already 39 out of 50. Already 39 out of 50 and we haven't even gotten close to finishing yet. So we are off to a great start. So uh let's type in best side hustles. Did that improve that score? It did. 41.5. All right, awesome. How to couch flip beginner's guide. So I'm going to type in beginner's guide. I'm going to type in Ryan. I spelled Ryan on Panetta, couch flipping. Did I type in couch flipping side hustle? I did. Um, best side hustles 2021. I'm going to type in my name just for the algorithm. Let's see if that raised the score. Did a little bit, 43. 
Okay, so we clearly need... Oh, I've been playing this video the whole time. We clearly need to find more tags. Catch flipping business. Catch flipping tips. Yes, that's a good one. Catch flipping tips. Go back to this view. Let's try that one. Couch flipping tips. I like that. Let's go see another high performing video. Video from Cameron. How to make money couch flipping. That's in his title. I like that. How to make money couch flipping. Did I raise it? 44.9. We're almost at that 50 mark. So let's see what tags he's got. Couch flipping, flipping couches, couch flip. Okay. So we need flipping couches, couch flip. 46.8, folks, we're getting up there. All right, this is fun. This is why I love YouTube. Flipping furniture. Ah, oh, yes, I forgot about that whole, okay. Flipping furniture, furniture flipping, flip, flipping, hustle business see did that 50 out of 50 we haven't even done the description yet haven't even done the description yet we checked all the boxes the tag count the tag volume the keywords in title all that we haven't even gotten to the description yet so as you can see these are all my default uploads so this happens every single time so let's do this oh shit Whoops, hold on, hold on, hold on, folks. Hold on, folks. Switching the view. All right. Oops. There we go. So, today's video... Man, we're lagging again. I've been filming for like two hours. We need to take a chill pill here. Today's video is... Let's do... Today's video is all about... Teaching beginners how to couch flip for profit. This is the complete step by step. Big, did I say beginner's guide? Step, let's use the word tutorial. Tutorial on furniture flipping. So we used a bunch of high SEO tags in the description as well. Not only that, we're going to hit enter and do three hashtag. YouTube allows you three hashtags, which boost the SEO even more. So we're going to do hashtag couch. I spelled that wrong. Couch flipping. Uh, side hustle. And let's do a beginner. Nope, spelled that wrong. So let's make sure we're still 50 out of 50. I mean, we are absolutely crushing it on this. So then I like to add the end screen elements, drag them to my outro here, size them up. Because when they reach the outro, these are actually interactive. So this... What is this? This is going to be your most recent upload. This is going to be the video that YouTube deems the best. And this is going to be your profile picture will actually be an interactive subscribe icon. So it's just a way for people to interact. Okay, so that's everything we need so far. You can add cards and stuff. I don't really screw with all that. I haven't noticed that making a difference. So then monetization. Oh, I guess we need to save our changes here. And we'll go to uh, monetization. Okay, still loading. It'll work now. There we go. Monetization. And now you'll get to see. Okay, so this is a 20-minute video. So I like to start around the one-minute mark, around the three-minute mark, around the six-minute mark. So one, three, six, and then eight to nine. We'll do nine. Then we'll do 12. Then we'll do about 15. We'll do one more here around the 18-minute mark. So for 20 minutes, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ads. Plus, we're going to have one in the beginning and one at the end. So what was that? What was I say eight? About, I can't remember what number it was. 10 or 11 ads. So that is the full top to bottom upload example showing you SEO, everything you need to know. And that's basically ready to go out. Usually, I like to schedule it around noon to three because that is the peak time for YouTube for some reason. 
for this channel. Um, I guess I might just have a younger audience when they get out of school or college or whatever. I don't know. My dad's is in the evening around five to six because that's when people that are his demographic get home from work and go home and watch some narco content, I guess. So that is basically the top to bottom, how I upload a video, how I rank it 50 out of 50, how I use vidIQ to basically spy on my competition and do it better than them. So hopefully this is the most valuable part of the entire lesson. All right, now we are moving on to fatal mistakes to avoid, things not to do. Please do not do any of these things. This is just as important as the rest of the entire course. These will literally kill you. If you do any of these, it's the equivalent of taking yourself out behind the barn and shooting yourself in between the eyes. So first is do not expect overnight success. This is a passive income business model. You have to build up a bank of videos. This will take time, maybe six months, maybe a year. Depends on how often you upload, depends on your niche, and depends on your content, depends on you. What you put in is what you get out, but do not expect overnight success. Number two, do not switch slash bounce niches. What I mean to that is stick to one topic. Do not make an airsoft video, then the next day talk about stocks. Because if you have an airsoft video here and a video about stocks, they're going to be like, wait, who should we market this channel to? YouTube algorithm is not going to know if they should promote it to people who want airsoft guns or if they want stock information. They just simply don't know. It'll stunt your overall growth. The almighty YouTube algorithm will not know which audience to push your content towards. And uh, yeah, that's a very bad deal. Um, if you built any fan base, you're better off starting a new channel before taking it out behind the barn and shooting it. So basically I had a podcast and I converted it to a finance channel because I didn't have an audience for the podcast. I just decided I'd rather have a high CPM niche, right? So that's okay because I didn't have an audience and it didn't really hurt my channel because I got rid of all of those videos. So if you're going to do something like I did, scratch it completely and don't show any sign of it ever existing. Next is uploading too little. You need to upload a decent amount. And I think the sweet spot is three videos a week for the first six months. I, I mean, every single day, if it's physically possible, especially if you're younger in school or college, if nothing else better to do. But if you know, oh no, we ran out of battery. I'll be right back, folks. All right, we were talking about uploading too little. You need to make content. Once a week will not cut it at first. With Lawyer Up, the legal channel, we did about three to four videos for the first year. Then we started getting monetized, the evergreen started kicking in, the passive income started kicking in, and it just kind of started snowballing and taking on a life of its own. So we were both able to step back. I was able to focus on growing the finance channel, and that's when that whole thing started. And my dad was able to focus on his law firm. So we upload one video a week now. And uh, yeah, so for the first six months, preferably a year, three videos a week minimum. She drink a water? Good girl. Good girl. And you do not want to upload too much. Keep the mindset of quality over quantity. If your videos require multiple film days and extensive editing, then obviously you do not want to rush things. Pick out figure out the perfect balance of frequent uploads and high quality. Balance is different for every channel. You just need to find uh, your balance. Sorry, it's hard to film a, a course when you have a little puppy running around destroying everything. Um, also not encouraging engagement that will kill you. You will miss out if, I mean, if you make a video and it blows up great, but if you don't encourage engagement, you're probably shooting half of its potential down immediately right there. You're getting way less subscribers, way less money. That is a horrible mistake to make. Always encourage engagement. Engagement is how you win. Always ask for lights, give them a reason to subscribe and keep coming back. Ask your audience a new question in every video to boost comments. Example, what do you guys think of my new bike? What brands would you recommend I check out? The more your audience interacts with your channel, the more it shows YouTube that people are having a good time and that your channel is worth it and worth other people's time, so then they will reward you greatly. Bad audio, believe it or not. <laughs> if someone will click out of your video quicker if it has worse audio versus if it has worse video, you need to have good audio. That's why I invested in this mic and I like when it's green. Why is it not green? Usually, oh, there we go. I like the green. Yeah, there we go. So I invested in a mic. I used to use this thing on the same stand, this thing right here. I have two of these. 
and I simply just got rid of it because it doesn't look quite as clean and it wasn't quite as good audio quality. It was great, but I need the best, right? So you want good audio. If you have a 30 minute long video and it you know, took you an hour to film, or I guess 30 minutes to film, it is worth reshooting. Trust me, you have to treat every video like it is the one, like it is the video that is going to blow up because you do not know what video will blow up. Also, not having social media, give your give your audience a place to engage with and hang out when you're not making content. Get sneak peek, build a further relationship with you and your brand and your channel. It gives you an option to monetize outside of YouTube, outside of just the ad sets. So, I mean, if you have a million subs, hey, she's chewing that carpet. She's pulling it up or the rug. If you have a million followers on YouTube, then you can easily make that into, you know, 100,000 followers on Instagram and then start getting brand deals and on Instagram and selling merch on Instagram, right? So you need to have social media for more reasons than one. Also getting copyright claimed. Use less than 30 seconds of other people's content at a time if you have to. There's a whole world to reacting and to broadcasting and all that stuff that I don't really get into because I'm not as into the, uh, you know, stealing other people's content, chopping it up and using it as your own. There are courses out there that teach you that. I'm not a huge fan of that business method and people get claimed all the time. I used to try it. I got claimed every single time I tried it. So it's not even worth it to me, Um, but maybe I'll make a course. There is a right way to do it. And in fact, I am working, not working yet, but I'm about to build a channel that it's all like faceless and you'll never even know I had it. So I'll let you know how that goes. Maybe make another course on that. But also use Epidemic Sound. Sign up for it. Do not use YouTube's free music. Trust me, don't use your homie's sick beat because he could have sampled it from somewhere. He could rap or sing over a beat that was not fully clean from Spotify or YouTube and still get dinged even a year down the road. You don't want that. You don't want to get demonetized. You want to follow all community guidelines. Now, the community guidelines and like partner policies are a little bit different. I mean, you got to follow the community guidelines or you can't make YouTube videos to begin with, right? So you got to at least get that far. You want to uh, make sure you read through all of the monetization policies, all of the YouTube partner program policies. So there's no questioning when you're, you know, there filming or editing. You don't waste any time. Um, I'll include some examples of things to leave out of your video. You want to avoid controversial topics, guns, violent or dangerous content, spam, slash scams. We've talked about all this. Sensitive content like nudity or hate speech. For our 30 seconds, do not cuss, although keep the whole cussing to a minimum. I just wanted to kind of refresh your memory on that. So those are fatal mistakes to avoid like the plague. Did I have this manual focus thing on here the whole time? Sorry, Bella. Freaked my pup out. Keep playing. Congratulations. You have finished the Fast Pass YouTube class. I'm sure you are as happy getting through this as I am filming it. So I hope you guys got a lot of information. And I'm just going to read through everything that you have learned. Let me pull up the document here. Just, yeah, you know what? Screw it. You want to get to make it a YouTube channel. I want to get to the pool. Let's just mutually agree to get this shit show over with. So now you should be able to select high CPM and viral niches. You should be able to increase your existing CPM. You should be able to purchase the correct equipment and software. You should be able to edit and upload software. You should be able to make money outside of AdSense via brand deals, merch, and affiliate marketing. You should be able to create channel art slash profile pictures to brand yourself. You should also know how to utilize the about page, tags, hashtags, descriptions, and titles to maximize SEO and success. You now understand the viral video formula, and you know how to rank high in SEO using vidIQ. You also know what uh, crippling mistakes to make. So in celebratory for ending the, oh man, you know what? We're going, we're done now. I'm, we're done, baby. I'm, you're going to get some rare, you pay, this is pretty, let's be honest. This is what you paid for. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to play the guitar straight up and down. You know what? I don't give a damn how bad it sounds. You, you paid for, you're getting your, you got your money's worth. I can't even tell where the notes are from here.
playing guitar like that again, my arm hurts so bad I couldn't even see what I was doing. Congratulations! And mini six. Oh, I'm tipping over my TV. Holy shit! Go crazy, people!